If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, for the first 48 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. First off, we'd like to wish Abby Marcus a speedy recovery. He got in a car accident recently. Um, he looks okay, so we hope he recovers quickly. Then we talked about 90s bodybuilding versus bodybuilding today. Uh, I consider the 90s to be the best decade of bodybuilding, probably because that's when I was a fan. Mm. Uh, but there are some differences between today and and back then. Not sure I would debate you on that yeah. one. Then we talked about I don't care. The ra- <laughs> I'm just gonna throw that in there. Then we talked about the roundup lawsuit. Uh so Monsanto Crazy. lost a lawsuit. Oof. Apparently their product, uh Roundup, gave a man cancer. This is according to the lawsuit. So they have to pay out two hundred and eighty nine million dollars. Mm. First punch of many, hopefully. That's what I was thinking. It's yeah. uh it looks like it's the beginning. Then we talked about the guy who stole the plane. In Seattle, the Crazy. airliner, <laughs> and did a years old barrel roll. Yes, that was nuts. definitely worth checking out the show notes for that conversation. And then crashed into a uh, into an island. Poor guy. Yeah. Um, Adam has been adding egg yolks to his Organifi protein shakes, both for the extra He's protein, yoked, and the extra cholesterol, and because it actually tastes really good, doesn't it? It does. Actually, it makes it up really good. Yeah. Uh, you can find his shake recipe on his Instagram. Also, we are uh, sponsored by Organifi. If you go to organifyshop.com, use the code Mind Pump, you will get twenty percent off. Did you give me the wrong site there, Doug? Yeah, you could do both, but you just. Oh uh, well, the other one is organifi.com uh, forward, slash forward slash Mind Pump. <laughs> Doug is having a tough time over there. Anyway, <laughs> use the code Mind Pump, get 20% off. Uh, then we talked about our other sponsor, Viori. They are make, making huge moves. Huge moves. They're Look getting, out, Lulu. Oh, here we come. Featured all over the place. Their business is growing cool like crazy. new brand. We found them first. Now, we got you guys 25% off. That's the biggest discount that they offer. If you go to Viori Clothing, let me spell that for you. V-U-O-R-I clothing.com forward slash Mind Pump. We got you 25 percent off uh you're we talk, welcome we talk about how google tracks everything that we do now should we be scared yep also want to mention on our youtube channel mind pump tv brand new video preacher curls or what your bicep For workouts the girls have been missing you know preacher curls was uh, larry scott the first mr olympia he made the preacher curl popular that was like his exercise. Little fun fact. Little, little snapple cap. Little snapple cap for you. <laughs> then we talked about uh, going to House of Prime Rib in San Francisco, and we bah. talked about our favorite restaurants. Then we get into the questions. First question was, this person's mother is 50, and she wants to start working out. Where does, should she start? Should she start with mobility? Probably CrossFit. Strength, cardio. Should she start doing uh, you know, all those uh, obstacle course races, CrossFit, mm-hmm. uh, pole dancing? All we talk stuff. about it in this episode. Next question was, when we talk about the body adapting to cardio and slowing down its metabolism by losing muscle mass, does that apply to somebody who has a very physically demanding job? So all you guys and girls out there who do construction work, uh, blue collar work, is your metabolism slowing down because you're so active all the time? The third question was, directed at Doug, this person wants to know what it's like working with us, quote, three knuckleheads. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Doug the Jug coming in hot. Screw you, man. And the final question, how do we handle conflicts between the four of us? Do we get into a cage and fight to the death? Do we arm we wrestle? Do that. Uh, or do we take our clothes off and the first person to get dressed loses? One of those things is not the answer. The others are also not the answer. But that find out what the answer is with, in this part of this episode. Also, I'd like to mention MAPS Performance, our functional training program, the one for people who want to be able to move amazingly and look amazing, it's 50% off. We mm. took the price and cut it in half. You go to mindpumpmedia.com, use the code GREEN and the number 50. So GREEN50, all one, no space. 50% off MAPS performance. I'd also like to mention our bundles where we combine multiple MAPS programs and put them together. Like our Sexy Athlete Bundle, which includes MAPS performance and MAPS aesthetic for people who want to build a symmetrical bodybuilder-like physique, but also move like an athlete. We also have a super bundle, which is a year of exercise programming. So you can find all those bundles and the 50% off MAPS performance with the code GREEN50 at mindpumpmedia.com. T-shirt time! And it's T-shirt time. Oh, yeah, bring them. 
We had 15 Hooray. reviews. We're giving out four shirts. The winners are ZIWJB1848, Vigatron, Titus B, oh, Vigatron, and T Joker22. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Vigatron summoning the power of soy. Doug, Doug, okay. Doug, the Doug, Doug, Doug. Doug. Doug the drug. Doug the jug. I feel like he's okay. Doug the jug. So it is Doug the jug. Doug I, I kind of like him as Doug the jug. Do you guys remember why we call yeah. him? Do you guys remember why we call him Doug the jug? Do you guys remember the story behind that? Because he, like, would pee in a jug. That's right. <laughs> right. He was on a road trip. He told us a story, and uh, there were no bathrooms, and so he just uh, peed in the jug. Was that was that what happened, or was that he's the gangster br- like no, that's that? That's true. Yeah, that was so, true. I was in, we we're in Florida. And my room was separated from the bathroom. And in order to get to the bathroom, I had to go through somebody else's room, and I didn't want yeah. to. So I had a water bottle, and I took care of business. <laughs> so be, <laughs> be careful when you're asking for some kombucha. <laughs> yeah. Just FYI. Hopefully it was one of those big leader ones, because I know people that make the mistake thinking that they won't fill up one of those oh, little... Oh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't take long to fill up a small bottle. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. yeah. I think that takes some... You got to aim real then good. You're going to spill. You, know, right? you don't want to spill. God forbid you get the split stream. Oh, that would be oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all over the floor. Did, now, were you with him, Sal? When no. This, yeah, when, I was holding the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I figured. No, I wasn't I there. I thought so. I wasn't there. Oh, this is like an old story. This is like a college story or what? No, no this was no, in this Florida. Was, yeah, we all started <laughs> talking about this afterwards. Remember? Dude, Doug, Doug is... Uh, Doug. Oh, when we were in Florida, yeah, man. Oh, as in all of us. Yeah, yes. Doug the Jug. He became Doug the Jug at Did, that moment. Doug's by far the most gangster. Of what all house of us. was that? What house? I'm trying Florida, to remember. bro. Remember the house where we well, had we've to, been we to had Florida the, more than once. That's what I'm trying to figure. Remember out. Remember the house where his room and my room were connected by just a sheet, and he had to go through my room. I think it was my room. He had to go through to get to the. Bathroom. Was that when we stayed up? Uh, stayed up at the, the flat. Yeah, the yeah. flat. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, not, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. thinking the, the, the brick the, building one. Yeah, right? yes. yeah. I was thinking the last house that we were at. I was like, that doesn't make sense. I don't remember, but I forgot about that place. Doug is the yeah. most gangster out of all of us, for sure. Maybe, for yeah. sure, yeah. He didn't Probably. look like it. Well, yeah. I learned that down at Burning Man yeah. is the you know pee in the jug thing. Yeah, and you've been there twice, right? You've been to Burning yeah. Man two times. I mean, because they have these porta potties <laughs> out there, and you have to walk in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. What? Doesn't make any sense. You don't want to walk on the playa yeah, in the just middle of the night. Stuff. You don't know what's going on out there. Yeah, yeah. So I feel, I'm like, mistaken I you feel like every time we talk about Burning Man, there's something about it that we'll, we'll so we'll bring something up, and I'm like, man, I really want to go, and then we'll bring something else up, and I'm like, yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go anymore. Nah. <laughs> I have these moments where, yeah, I know because everybody else is. doing Remember it. how hard I was pushing it in the beginning? I was like, we got to go, be we great for my book. Now I'm like, eh. Like I, I'd appreciate like a lot of the art there, you know. Like you brought that one, you know, sculpture up and stuff. Yeah, and, it was pretty cool, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. like stuff like that is fascinating to me to see what people come up with. But yeah, there's there's that other cultural part of it that it's, I'm just kind of like, Meh. well, it's super dusty and dirty. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't do well. Like and that. yeah, there's a lot of you know, and I'm not down with that part. And I don't, I don't like dirt. Ew. Yeah, like if, if it's too dirty. Yeah. Hey, one of uh, one of our listeners uh, took the advice of. The French tip thing, and he's, he's <laughs> they got yeah. their, they got their toenails good on. looking, fit, buff guy too. So it should work really well wow, for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not working for him. Mm. Not not in today's day. Not working for is him it, at all. Uh, and he's exact, actually today he's, it's not that weird. I yeah, guess, I was gonna right? say he's probably just not unique enough. Well, anymore. so and th- th- this is what you know. I was kind of speculating is you know maybe and he seems like a confident guy. I think he's asking. He's not. You can tell like the way he's even asking. Like I've had people do it, and then you could tell even the way they ask me about it. He's they're like, just they're insecure. Like, I'm not getting a reaction, right? And they and they have a hard time with it. But he just he seems like, hey, dude, I'm I'm rocking this thing, and I'm rocking with confidence. It just ain't working out the way it's supposed yeah. to work out, or like yeah. you say it is. But maybe you're right, Justin. Maybe it's just. Maybe it was it's different cool. nowadays. Maybe it was cool. It's 15 too normal years, now. Fifteen years ago, when I started doing it, when like nobody was doing I it. I think today. I think we're about five years away from. If you want to stand out at the pool party, you have no tattoos, no piercings. Right. You comb your hair to the side. <laughs> you have like a fade. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Or like a flat top. And then the like, girls like old, oh, old my God. school. Like look at that guy over there. He's so different. Yeah, he's so like masculine. Wow. Weird. <laughs> I go talk to him. That is so strange <laughs> yeah. to see a masculine guy. Yeah. He doesn't even. He has a hairy chest and everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, it, we it might. Be, uh, it back. may not be cool anymore. I don't know. I'm. Uh, it's been mm. a while since I've done mine, so I, I still like. I like it. Keeps them clean. Makes my toes look better than what they would look like if I didn't do it. So yeah, they look kind of messed up, right? Right. It's better than my gang green looking ones. Right. You know that's, I mean? So that's part of. Like, you wouldn't be able. They wouldn't. They probably it's like deny makeup your for your feet. I hide, bro. I hide mine. I feel like they did 
deny you service. If they, you they wouldn't be able to work with this. They'd get, you know what they do? They get the sander out of the back. <laughs> get the sander out of the back, please. Yeah, and the blast yeah. shield yeah. over yeah. their face, yeah. so they don't get all the parts. They get them the, in the, eye. the welder. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Dude, yeah. speaking of, you of want that. speaking of messages, you guys know my Insta stories. I post. Funny memes and controversial shit half the time, right? All the time, all the time. half the time, yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah if you you get a like you get every a, day. Yeah, actually, get a lot of followers now that just follow me for my memes, right? But anyway, I'm constantly pushing buttons, and I'll get a message here or there about the stuff that I'll post where I'll piss someone off a little bit or whatever. But it's actually, believe it or not, quite rare. Oh, the fucking snowflakes. It's quite, yeah, right. It's quite rare. Well, th- I posted one today that I did not even think. Half the time when I post a controversial one. What you one, post today? I didn't see anything that was controversial. Exactly. Which yeah. one? Exactly. So I'm going to find it. So, you know, I'll post something and I know when it's controversial. Yeah, there's ones it. that you post. I'm like, oh, that's going to ruffle some Yeah, players. exactly. Like the free speech one. I'm like, let's see what happens. And that's sort of a nice debate. Anything discussion. with students gets people's hair on fire. Bro, this, this is so fun. So what do we always say about the millennial gen- generation and the younger generation? Right? We say how they're so sensitive and it's a bad stereotype, right? Right, right. Yeah. But they always prove themselves to be that way. <laughs> so I did a post. <laughs> but it always plays out. It's the stupidest post of all time. So there's a post and it's got two pictures, one on top of the other. The first picture says, it's got a picture of like Led Zeppelin. And it says the 70s, $5 to see the greatest band oh, yeah, that was a great live one. in concert. And then underneath yeah, it's it, obvious. underneath it, it's like a DJ in front of like a rave looking thing. And it says the 2000s, $100 to see a laptop live, yeah, right? Yeah. Is that even controversial? No. I got like five messages, bro. Really? From kids who are like, well, you know, right now, they're like, this is a, this is a, this is a, uh, you know, a little bit of like get off my lawn type of attitude, don't you think? I mean, what? Art, artists today get, my response to them all was like, it's a joke. Yeah. Like, wait, yeah, like what? What are you defending it's, it's this? It's a funny, I'm like, you're only, you're only making yourself look and now worse. I'm forced to defend it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. It it's literally a is a lie. I don't even get to how you get upset about that. Yeah. Because it's comparing an older generation to the newer generation. That's it. I think it's because they're offend- They get offended so easily. Oh, good. Like it, <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. That's when you like, pick up a fucking instrument. That's but like, who cares? And learn how to play. Yeah, I don't it, really care. Dude. It doesn't. It no. doesn't matter, right? No, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could. You, it's I mean, still music. I'll make that argument. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's just yeah. different. You know. But it's funny because I reply. I replied back to them like, you know what's funny? I said I did this. I didn't even know people would get upset. That's and funny. I'm like, all you're doing is proving the stereotype that you guys get offended <laughs> so easily. Like, I'm the easiest thing. Wow. Uh, How funny was that? Hey, wow. dude, did you see the uh, Aubrey Marcus, man? Got in a car accident. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Bad one, it looked like. Dude, he had both eyes messed up. Looks I like talk, he broke I, his nose. I, I very, very briefly talked to Kyle. I guess he said his car got totaled. I don't wow. know what happened, though, so... Oh, you have you heard- smash into uh, like a tree or something? I don't what know. Happened? I don't know. Or, or gar- or guardrail is what guardrail? I read. Yeah, yeah is what I read. As long as he's okay, man. That's yeah. Yeah. No, he's yeah. okay. Th- thankfully, he's okay. He's out. He just got his- it looks like he hit his face on the on the airbag real hard, right? Yeah, that that that's like? usually what look. Yeah, you, the airbags just an airbag will oh, do that. Dude, you they, didn't know that broken yes, nose yes. and two black eyes. You, you have to that? be real careful. With airbags, yeah, bro, they're Powerful. An airbag. You know, I almost feel like hitting my steering wheel might have been better. No. I no, mean, when you look at when you look at how bad is so is, you know how to get in order to get the airbag out because so, I talked to a client who got in a car accident and hit it's the like airbag a cannon and she out. was explaining it to me because I was she's like oh I hurt my neck and I broke my nose when I got in a car accident I'm like oh my god what happened she's like well nothing I just hit the airbag and I was shocked too yeah and so she says that she broke her nose and it black eyes just yeah from, wow, so so maybe you're right so wow. in order to get the bag out in time because remember an accident is like split second right. In order to get it out in time, they use like gunpowder. It's a lot of force. They use out. gunpowder to get it out. And, yeah. it, and she says it felt like running your face into a basketball as hard as you could. That's how firm it felt, she said. Oh. <laughs> well, I can imagine. I mean, like you, that old lady. You see his slammed. black eyes yeah, and the yeah. broken nose from it. I mean, that's got to be yeah. the force on it's that. better than a brain. Well, no, you're right. Or breaking yeah. your neck or whatever. I mean, I'm joking that my face hitting a steering wheel would be better. I know it wouldn't be, yeah. but I didn't realize that the airbags were that bad. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. force. Because you, have you ever seen slow motion videos of people's faces actually getting hit by basketballs and stuff, and you see how much the ball actually goes in? Mm. So it's like that comes out fast and hard, and it probably feels like you bounce right off. Mm-hmm. But and it's probably made of a real thick material. It's not like something real thin that the air would blast through. Yeah, so well, it's when probably you're pretty solid. After, it's probably a good. It's probably a good analogy. The a basketball. lot of times people freak out afterwards because they'll smell the gunpowder or whatever it is that uses to propel the the airbag out, and, and they feel like the car's on fire or something like that. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty. But as long as he's all right, man, yeah. he's a really fit, strong dude too. So I'm sure that helped him. You know. From yeah, getting any major recovery for sure. Getting any major injuries. I know remember back in the day in the nineties when Flex Wheeler got in a crazy accident. You guys remember that? Mm-mm. Yeah, back in the nineties, Flex Wheeler, who was one of the best bodybuilders of of all time, but definitely the nineties, 
got in a crazy car accident, and then uh, the doctors were like, yeah, if you weren't as muscular as you were, you probably would have broke a lot of shit. Wow. He, he still is my, my all-time favorite physique. Just appearance-wise? Just appearance-wise. Really? Yes. The, his, his symmetry. He's definitely up there. I mean, Ronnie Coleman's one of my favorite because of just his, how massive he was and how impressive he was. Yeah. And in and with his strength and everything like that. So I'm a big Ronnie Coleman fan. Yeah. But oh man, he's got Who's Wheeler the that- Wheeler had the the most the prettiest physique of I mean, I think the his balance, his abs and his waist, like he was right before all the guts started coming in. Yep. And so he had this incredible six pack and waist and his shoulders, legs, his symmetry was just insane. His dude. best physique ever, because I love I was also a huge fan of Flex Wheeler, but his physique over time, started to get a little bit, you know, bigger. Oh, yeah, little, dude. So, Doug, if you uh, can look up, that's just look that's up Flex, filthy, look up Flex crazy. Wheeler, nineteen ninety three Arnold Classic. I love that yeah, shot. His of, legs are huge. That shot of him where he's looking down is one of the baddest yeah. shots ever. That third picture over where he's just kind of he slunched over, hanging he, over. Like he that. just had, he, you know, what he had? He had cartoonish shape to his muscles. He had really yeah. small joints, and his muscles were really long, so it like went into. So the best. Uh, version of him, in my opinion, is his 1993 Arnold Classic win. And if you actually Google, if you look up the YouTube video of it, Doug, you can actually play him going through his routine. And so that 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 third picture in where he's doing the twisting back double bicep, yeah, yeah. that's the Olympia. Uh, excuse me, that's the the Arnold. 93 Arnold Classic. His body was so sharp, and I think it was the right size because after that he started to get bigger mm. to try and chase Dorian because Dorian was you know first place all the time. Yeah, you guys know what happened after Dorian left, right? What do you mean? No. So Dorian Yates, who was very dominant in the '90s, um, and he was just a mass monster, just a scary looking mass monster. Flex Wheeler was supposed to be was like the uncrowned Mister Olympia. He was like the heir to the throne, right? <clears throat> Dorian Yates leaves the Olympia, and everybody pretty much is like. Flex is going to win, guaranteed. <clears throat> guaranteed he's going to win. That was the year Ronnie Coleman hit the stage and looked the way he did. And when came he out of nowhere because the year out before, of nowhere. Yeah, the year before that he placed like tenth, tenth or below, right? Tenth, dude. That must have been a shitty feeling for Flex because he knew he was supposed to win. Yeah, see, look at him posing here. This is the the best version of his physique that I've ever and, seen. And what's uh, what's unfortunate that it, that kind of is the time when we started going away from like this this gorgeous looking physique to just who could be the most impressive, like the most massive. Imp- by the way, Google right now, uh, Doug. Um, why can't I think of his name right now? Not Big Rami, but the other monster, uh, Rolly Winkler. Oh yeah, yeah. Look yeah. at him right now in the off season. Yeah, so yeah, everyone's talking about him right now. Is I know he looks crazy. He is crazy, yeah. crazy looking right now. Yeah, all those guys over there are getting silly looking. Rolly Winkler. Dang, he can do the splits. That's yeah, there crazy. he is. There he is on the. Yeah, the uh, second one. The, the second, second video one. is his most recent, like updated. Yeah. I think you did the first, yeah, there that you one, go. that one right there. Yeah, this, he, is, what, this is what he looks. You know like what's right crazy now, though is he doesn't he doesn't win a lot of competitions though. He looks crazy, but then he doesn't seem. Well, to look at that, dude. Whoa. This the prediction is that this could be his year where he's going to be up there next to Phil Heath, dude. Uh, dude. I mean, I, I don't know how you don't give. He it He looks to like him. the Hulk, man. He's monstrous. You know, here's the deal. Wait till he hits the stage because you know how many times I've seen bodybuilders I know, off season off, and then then they get in and they look crazy. Yeah, yeah. you know. A so, lot of them, I think, sometimes look better before they hit they yeah. hit the hit the stage, dude. Well, bodybuilding is body. It's funny because you can divide bodybuilding by eras, and you can clearly see when all of a sudden a new, like a new rabbit hits the scene that everybody starts to chase, and it's like takes everything to the next level. And you had Arnold, who was that in the seventies, and then you had um, uh, what's his name, Lee uh, Lee Haney, mm-hmm. who took it to another level in the eighties, which was now everybody got even bigger. And then the '90s came, and that was the that was when the era of the mass monster really started. Is when Dorian hit the scene, and you know he looked he gained like I don't know how many 10, 20, 20 pounds I think like that over one year. Those those famous black and white photos of him posing, and now uh, and then Coleman. But now it seems like they're. It looks like there's this new era of bodybuilder where they're just looking cartoonish to a whole nother level because Roly doesn't look. It looks inhuman. Yeah, it doesn't look good to me anymore. But I mean, to each their own, right? Yeah. I mean, that's I, I, and there's always going to be a place for this because that's how we are as 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 a human, right? We want to we want to see who's going to push the boundaries the furthest. So it'll always have this entertainment factor to it. Of I just want to see how big these motherfuckers mm-hmm. can get. Like yeah, it's like and, almost like their skin looks like it's going to tear at any yeah. minute from their muscles like pushing it out. Okay, like look how impressive he looks right there. You know why he you know why he doesn't place hires because he's short. 
I think that's what it is. Uh, see, see, how, see how they're standing? All, they're all short guys right there. Yeah. You know what, though? Um, I will say this about bodybuilders of the 90s, that because usually it improves every every decade. They're not today, and I'm sure I'll get hammered for this, but they don't seem as sharp as they did in Why the 90s. Why would you get hammered for that? That's a fact, bro. You think so? Oh, God, it's a fact. It's, yeah. you, you look, at the, look at all three. Even as impressive as they look... Look at their abdominal region, their obliques and everything. It's just not as, as put together as Well, you know why, though? I think that the, they finally stopped using diuretics the way that they did in the 90s because the diuretics were killing people. Hmm. Like they were taking shit to suck the water out, pharmaceuticals, and they were looking. Like you look at like Andreas Munzer who passed away. Look at that guy when he was posing. He literally looked like, look, he had no skin. He looked like Oh, these guys are all still using diuretics, bro. But do you think they're using like they did back then? Well, I don't know. I mean, obviously, if there's a bunch of dudes that start dying off it, I'm sure they changed the, the regimen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, maybe we should switch this out. But I mean, everyone's still using diuretics what a crazy, for, for sure. Crazy sport. Dude, <clears throat> crazy, crazy lawsuit that has set a precedent with uh, Monsanto. Oh, oh yes. I'm glad you brought that up, dude. Did you hear about this? Yeah, 250 dude. million. 89. Oh, 289. 289 million. Wow. So and this he, is just from one person. Like, so he's a, he was a school groundskeeper. Yeah. And he would spray the you know the, the grass or whatever, the grounds. With to, Roundup. Yeah, with Roundup from his truck on windy days. And a couple times it would get you know, all over him or on his face or on his body. And so he took them to court and said that, and then he got non-Hodgkin's uh, leukemia. So his case was that the that the Roundup is what gave him the cancer, mm. and he won. Now, two hundred eighty nine million dollars for a company like Monsanto is literally it's a sneeze. Yeah, that's like change inside the you know like uh, in the in the in the couch. You know, you, 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 they search the couch for change. They find two hundred. Yeah. That's how little it is. But that's not the point. The point is, this is the oh, first the fact that they can attach the cancer to that is going to be. Now watch what follows there's four, that. There's like forty, I think, something like forty other lawsuits. Yeah, well, that watch are, what that follows coming. that. I'd right be on. real curious to sit in on that, you know, court case and see what kind of evidence they presented, so that way it was compelling enough. Because like to just say that it caused, you know, that was like one of the key factors Bro, um, that caused cancer. It's great that they can attribute to that. I would love to imagine know, sit how, in on that. Imagine how much evidence there has to be. First yeah, of all, Monsanto's you're, you're innocent. The- yeah, you're innocent till proven guilty, and then you better believe you they the have the biggest lawyers that you could possibly. Yes, you better believe yeah. they got a, a, a legal team to like That's no I'm other. Surprised. Those so bio- the fact that they won is mm-hmm. crazy. Those biotech companies are some of the biggest, most powerful companies in the world. Yeah, um, and they're in, all over the world, and they're connected to the government. They get lots of subsidies from our taxes to pay for corn or pay for whatever. Um, they have a lot of power, so much power that when states tried to pass. GMO labeling acts, the federal government passed a law saying you can't, that no states can do that. That's how much power they have. There's so much- So absurd. It's insane, right? But but this is opening a whole Pandora's box because now that this guy won, you're going to see other other people who are suing Monsanto use oh, the- Class play- action, here it comes. Use the yep. playbook. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And But yeah. here's the real thing, because what they can do, they have so much money is they can just go in this and, and play this, you know, these games and, and it'll be okay- for them, but the more that these things hit the media and the more that people see them, the worse their reputation will be and the, the higher the demand for organic will be, the higher the demand for non-GMO will be. Yeah. That demand is, it's already exploding. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but some some places now are importing, which I find comical, importing organic food from China because our our, our, our demand for organic has gone up so much. Right. I mean, it's insane. How do they prove that? How do they prove that? Yeah. How do they you don't prove- need to prove. You could just see who's who's importing. importing. No, no, no. How do they prove the source is truly organic? Oh, no, no, no. That's where you got to. Yeah, you got to worry. Feel like, yeah, I feel like that would be such a. Well, I've heard even great. Like, that'd be a hustle. You would think, I right? Think so. I've heard you have to be skeptical, even from like just buying rice from China. That a lot of it is shaved pieces of plastic. They found that. What? Yeah, yeah. they've actually found. Pla- There's a lot of fuckery. Plastic particles and 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 rice and sawdust and other you know products and yeah I know yeah 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 see I, I, yeah that shit would that's why you go I, to, I don't trust that's why I don't like trust if, it the at best all. is like go to your farmer's market some yeah. local you know homegrown shit where you can go you can go you know walk the down, farmer yeah you go walk down to his house yeah, we, and got, go. we got farmer Tom dude he's our guy dude we how full farm how full circle are we coming like we started off in this country like being farmers and like busting our asses. Then we like created technology and we moved out of the farms into the cities and we're like, we're progressing. Now we're making enough money to we're like, I want a farm. I want to own my own farm yeah. so, so I can true. grow my own shit. 
<laughs> yeah. You know yeah. Speaking of that, which evolved one? to de-evolve. Who bought the whole pig? Who was? Well, I was Justin? trying. Yeah, I was trying to get you guys to do that with me, but uh, yeah, we're we're doing that. So we're getting a bunch of cuts from. We're, we're splitting it with another family. Okay. I'm not a huge uh, pork fan. If you do yeah. it with beef, I'm down. You're not. You're not a big bacon guy. But that's a little the thing. Bit, bacon but... and sausage for days, dude. We like because we got plenty of eggs, so that was the compliment to that. Yeah, but that's the whole pig. So you're not only going to get sausage, you can get a bunch of other. Yeah, we'll stuff. get a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. I'm not I'll a huge fan it. of pork. It's not the, my biggest. I mean, we'll do beef too, but that's yeah. more expensive, you know, to go in on that. Plus, but. that's a big. Yeah, it's a big cows, commitment. Yeah, you a need like a freezer, yeah. like a huge yeah. freezer. Yeah. You know what else they found? <laughs> Speaking of plastic and stuff, do you know what else consistently tests for plastic? Mm. Sea salt. Because mm. when they get when they make sea salt, what they'll do is they'll take it's from the ocean, so yeah. they'll evaporate the water and collect the salt. But the oceans are so polluted Dang. that they that when you when you analyze sea salt, there's typically there's plastic in it. There's little bits of plastic. So you're better off doing like Himalayan sea salt, like Himalayan, uh, you know, salt or Dude, that is crazy. or good old fashioned fucking, <laughs> you know, like the old school iodized. The ocean is so vast, and you're gonna have like that kind of contamination wherever you go. It's crazy to me. Yeah, we fucked things up. Yeah, we did. We, did you guys we see? Speaking of news, did you guys see the the kid, the 29 year old guy, the groundskeeper who crashed the airliner? That's crazy. 29 years old hijacks a plane. And then by himself, though. So, and of course, they send up two jets right away, like worried that it's a terrorist. Yeah, I think it's a terrorist thing. They have the whole conversation documented between him and the controller, and they're trying and trying to talk him down to come back. We should put that in the show notes. Oh, I will. I have hilarious. Oh, yeah, Yeah. I'll have Jackie post uh, post this for sure in the show notes because it's and not all the the videos don't show the whole conversation. So you have to. I have the the written uh, article, so I'll give it to Jackie to post. So if you want to read it, it is crazy because the guy is. His conversation with the controller is super calm. Dude. He's like totally calm. He's about to kill himself. He's trying to do some barrel roll. He does do a barrel roll. You can now that you can watch <laughs> like, on YouTube. Doug, look at Doug's got it right now. Look at this. Homeboy does a. And comp- he just crashes right into an island. He right? does. He does the barrel roll, and he yeah. comes. It looks like it looks like about a I don't know a few few feet off the water. I'm sure it's probably like fifty to hundred feet, but he does the roll, makes the roll. Uh, fly, and then he actually crashes into an island over by Seattle. Wow. Imagine being walking the lake, seeing a a a, a airliner that big yeah. do a fucking somersault like oh my that. God, there it is. Yes, dude. Well, wow. here, here's the thing that gets that frightens me. First of all, poor guy, or you know, whatever. That's terrible. He, yeah, he, you know, he has some, some kind of mental but breakdown. Luckily, he didn't hurt anybody else. But here's the crazy part to me. How the fuck did he steal a plane? Is it that easy? Well, he works you, there. You, okay. He gets past all the security. Shh, but So? Yeah. Still? No, I know. To you know get what I'm access saying? into the plane yeah, in the just, cockpit? Yeah, he's not a crazy. pilot. Yeah. How the hell did he get in there and take off? <laughs> yeah, there's got to be like keys to get into they, that component. What do they, they leave the keys in well, the Well, there's got to be. Yeah, but I, I don't think it'd be as hard as you think. There's got to be how many times... In a, 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 in every single day, is there a single one person in, in coming in and out of a plane? Yeah, Cleaning how did he, it, food. How did not, he turn it on yeah. and get it going? Well, yeah, gonna, exactly. How always, he turn it on? All he's got to do is close it. Once he's closed it, then he's in there. He's There's like sh- buttons that just turn it on. Yeah, right. don't they? Just, fuck, my car's harder to steal. How do you? How did he get it? You just went in there and <laughs> turned it on? put the club on it, right? Yeah. We're talking about this. You know what I, mean? like, <laughs> I don't look at it. All I, planes need yeah. clubs. Justin made fun of me the yeah. other day about having the club on my Camaro, right? He's he's laughing. He's like, oh, with the club, dude. I remember that. I'm like, you know what's funny? club. Is after my second vehicle was stolen, I finally went out and bought that because the cop, you know, the, the cop who came and reported it uh, on my second stolen vehicle said, he goes, he and said, I, don't date crazy girls. No, we should yeah, 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 yeah. He said, yeah, that key too. your car yeah, and slash that, your tires. says that yeah. too. Look at, look at, look how close I got. Oh my God. That's I know. crazy. So he, t- he tells me that the best, so I've, I've got, I had like at that time that, that vehicle, I had this badass alarm system. On there that cost me a, a bunch of money. Still, they still jacked it, you know, with that on there. And the guy tells me, he says, "Yeah, you, if you, uh, your best chance of keeping someone from stealing your car is by a club." He goes, "Most most of these guys that go out to go steal steal cars, they don't." scope out your exact car and then they you know they wait they just they're, they're they gonna just go steal. break a window and yeah. then hotwire they go and look out. for certain yeah. model types that are easy to break into and then they they find them so they're looking for an easy in and out job yeah, and a club is a pain in the ass yeah and a yeah, club you unless you got, like you got a hacksaw yeah you need like a jigsaw with you and stuff like that yeah. and you get you know the time that it takes to do that is too much time and no one wants to do yeah. that you so know it's it makes the, a lot of you sense. know it's the other way that's great for preventing people from stealing your car 
Have, have a shitty car. Drive no, a drive Jetta. Stick yeah. shift. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know that they say that. Stick shift cars never get Sorry, Sal. Never get <laughs> stolen. I don't care. No, it'll, it'll make my life. It'll make it easier. I'll get the that insurance money. I'll be like, all right, I'll finally get some. <laughs> I used to have it through cell, and yeah, I was yeah. always like, yeah. nobody's I hope somebody this. steals this. You know, yeah, fucker. like, please, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. So, no, you if you drive a stick shift, they'll, they're, the odds of it getting stolen are so low because people don't know how to drive a stick yeah, shift. Yeah, yeah, it is. I know that. That is funny. I, I guarantee so many people don't even know what to do. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of which, my cousin bought himself a 2006 Porsche Carrera, which is uh, fun to drive, man. You guys ever get one of those, those yeah. little, it was a flat six, naturally aspired, you know, uh -huh. 300 and something horsepower, four point something, zero sixty. It's fast, but, yeah, it but handles the balance in like, the, yeah, suspension, oh, yeah. those are crazy. Oh, it's so fun, man. I so to, fun. Yeah. I used to valet up at the uh, Villa Montavo and there was like a fire road. And the there was this corner that was like a hairpin turn. I mean, it was like you dick. It was crazy, and so I would just <laughs> you know. And you'd always know who which car had the best handling based off of that turn because we would hit it fast and hard. And uh, dude, the, the Porsches outperformed any oh, other car I've ever drove. So, so fun. Now that I live right behind Capital Expressway, Capital Expressway has got the the two four lanes over by the car dealerships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is my. My like once a w I bring the Camaro out now once a week right back to back to driving it now that I've moved it over to the new place, and it's like the perfect little you know I take it down and I go I take a ride out of my place and I've got the whole four lanes, and then I take a turn and I come back and when I turn I fucking whip you know yeah. Yeah. right in front of all the just I'm just waiting for my ticket I know it's coming sooner <laughs> or later it's just too tempting it's four lanes so I can't quite I can't fuck it up if I tried you know what I'm yeah. saying so even if I overcorrect and whip into a full donut I still have enough room it's to just fuck. fun man yeah. you know like come on like let, and I let, do let it us, at, like have fun I do it at a safe then. time it's yeah. four lanes I'm whipping it around the other side there's no cars there a stop be line careful, man. I used to you, peel out in my back, truck back, every now and then. back in those days those cars had very little safety you know, oh, things, yeah. they're, they're, yeah. oh, I'm, they're like tanks, though. I'm conservative when I drive it still because you can feel that. I mean, when you when you get on it in that car, it's like nothing compared to any other car that I've driven. You have, the cars, the, so again, talking about my cousin. So my cousin asked him, I said, why'd you get this model? And he said, because this this is everything is, it's not super um, electronic like the newer cars. Because what he likes to do is he likes to go to Vegas and he'll rent supercars. Yeah. You could do this for fun. Oh, so he recently rented a McLaren. And he's like, I'm like, how was it? And he goes, it's cool. He goes, but it's fucking, he goes, car drives itself. Everything is, oh, yeah. everything's super high tech. There's, it's not stick shift. He's oh, like, it's. That's no fun. He's like, it's very different. He goes, I like to feel the, I'm like that too. I yeah, like to yeah, feel yeah, the yeah. road when I'm driving. So like, like your car, Adam, like you have to know how to drive. I've always yeah. wanted to drive one of those GT40s. I always thought that oh, would yeah. be f crazy. Yeah. You could do that. You go to Vegas. It'll cost you like five hundred bucks, yeah. and you get it for four hours. Maybe we'll do that the Let's next time. Do that. Yeah, oh, we'll, that'd be amazing. That would be a fun thing to do when we because we've been talking about going out to Vegas. Get two for of them. A, yeah, that would be fun. No, to we'll go, end up go do a little, do a little, shoot little assault track rifles day. and I, drive crazy cars. I know this is a terrible transition to one of our commercials, but I have to give you some credit here, Sal, because you were the one that turned me on to the. I turned you on. Yeah, you do a you lot. Do, yep. <laughs> the uh, end of commercial. You guys. The, <laughs> yeah, end of commercial yeah. over now. Sal the Stefano maps. No, we're the, gonna have a bathroom break. We'll the, be right back. The Organifi shakes have become pretty pretty consistent in my diet lately because we we're on this challenge right now, and I started adding the three egg yolks, mm -hmm. and it's great because it's one it boosts the shake up now, so now it's closer to a forty gram. It's like thirty six grams of protein. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting 36 grams of protein in there, and it actually I think it makes the shake taste even better. Yeah. So I don't know if yeah. you got. I posted the recipe that I, I I've been using, which is my blueberries, bananas. I just spinach. do it because of the cholesterol, bro. Yeah. I really t I can well, yeah, tell the it's difference. It's become my post workout shake. Yeah, so intermittently do that. Once you said that, that for sure it's helped. You know, don't like you notice a difference? Uh -huh. Isn't yeah. that wild? It is weird. Isn't that wild? Well, so yeah. cool. So I gotta, a little. I got to give you credit on that. We're credit to do. I appreciate it. Yeah, which yeah. one do you use, vanilla or chocolate? Uh, I use vanilla because I'm adding fruit and other things in there. Yeah, so I don't yeah. like that. I'm not a, if you were to just drink, chocolate by itself, by, yeah, by itself yeah, with yeah. water or whatever, shake it up. Agreed. Like that's cool. But I doctor mine all up. I mean, yeah. I'm putting spinach and blueberries and bananas and everything inside of it. And dude, speaking of our sponsors, what, what was going on with Viore? Weren't they doing, making some big moves? What do you mean? Viore, weren't they on? Oh, 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 yeah. No, they just, they, they made GQ. GQ they made, uh, right. New, uh, New York Times and a bunch of big ass art. Uh, They're taking off. Taylor sent it over to me. I should look it up to give them some love. But yeah. I, you know, he, 
here's a you know speaking of Viore right and our boy Taylor I mean this is what I love about this kid you know is we you know we he was on Viore over a year ago you know before we anybody knew it was cool before it was cool yeah that's yeah. part of being cool bro is being getting on yeah, it early. you're welcome that is that's one of the things that I, I love about having Taylor on the team is that he is I this was me when I was younger I felt like I had this time to surf all the the you know, well back then it wasn't websites it was magazines and articles that you'd be reading and you'd pick up on new brands that were coming up and Taylor prides himself on being on the up and up with stuff like this. And Viore, I remember when he introduced it to me, he's like, listen, this is a very on-brand. He says they, they're they going to rival uh, Lululemon for the men's side. And Lulu has not really done well in the men's department. That's how they're going to start. They're going to make a name for themselves. I mean, he predicted and called all this like well over a year ago. Mm-hmm. And that's part of what we- They're were- blowing up. Oh, they are. Yeah. They're blowing up mm-hmm. right now. They call You know what they call that? I didn't, see, I didn't know that. You know what that category of clothes is? That Lululemon, but now- you have Yori, which is like you have a lot of men's clothes. That athleisure. Kind of, athleisure. Mm-hmm. athleisure. Athletic yeah. leisure. It's it's brilliant. because It is because it's comfortable, but it looks well, cause good. because you can wear it out after the gym. Like you can still wear it out and get coffee and like doing stuff. And, and it's not weird. And we all know that Lulu fucking just ate up the whole market for women in that area. Yep. Like everybody, yeah. you can't go out somewhere to the mall or anywhere in public and not see a chick in Lululemon pants right. Right, right. at almost all times where- there really hasn't been that market for men, and Viore is doing that, dude. Their their stuff. I mean, well, Justin the wears women's it a stuff. lot. Yeah, I wear it all the time, and and Courtney loves their shorts. Like she like prefers their shorts over any Lululemon shorts. Really? Yeah, yeah. It just fits way better. Wow, it has wow. like a nice uh, like a uh, underlining that that fits well. Wow, so. they wow. Look at this. They pro- they project revenues for the end of 2018 of between 30 million and 50 million. After already having grown 125% in 2017, so they anticipated 160% growth in 2018. They're on fire. Yeah. Yeah, they really It's great are. to see, man. So check this out. This article just got posted this morning. Google tracks your movements even if you've turned location history off. So they did an investigation. This is nice because this is something that they said that they didn't do. But they're finding that they do do. They're tracking anyway. They do do. They do do. They do. The do investigation do-do. found that users are being misled by Google's claim that for those who turn off location history, the places you go are no longer stored. Right. With location history turned off, Google apps automatically store timestamped location data without even asking. Of course they do, dude. Why? Well, like. <sighs> It's so naive. It's like, of course, they, the they track to, every any piece of data. They want that piece of the data. The thing you have to ask yourself, though, is it, is it more concerning or is it more exciting because of what it allows yeah. allows us to do? It's concerning because they lie. I don't care if yeah. they do it as long as they tell us. But if they say they're not and then they do it, yeah. But if they do, if they do, it will will people people freak out, right? Just what do you like, mean? yeah. If you tell people that, I don't think people are like, oh, okay, cool. Like people are gonna right away push back on it, even if it's like the first step in this. Like, yeah, but now we're gonna be able to do this for you. And well, do this that is for all you. building into the predictive analytics yes, for everything. Right. It's, well, it's I, I think all across the board, people are more likely to freak out when they've been lied to, not if yeah. they've been told. That's a bad move on Google's part. It is because it, it's kind of like the you know ask I think they for weighed that out though. instead of for per- permission exactly that's I think they weighed like. that out well it's like ah yeah. people will be pissed but you know what we're gonna move yeah. forward well, anyway. wait till they see how cool it's gonna be when we have all this well you know the whole <laughs> conspiracy like oh, I was talking about something and next thing I know there's an ad for it and I'm always thinking like no are they really doing that are they really listening yeah. for keywords and popping things up so check this out we watched the Sandlot the other day which is on my Amazon Prime account so it's mine so I would expect if I saw a commercial for it right yeah. Jessica, who no connection to it other than watching it with us and probably talked about it, all of a sudden she's getting ads for, oh, look what's up. Look what the Sandlot crew is up to you know, these days. And she's like, what the fuck? Why is this popping up on my phone? Yeah. It's crazy, but it's cool. I don't know if I like that. I way. like that. I like that I if there's if, if like there's it. stuff that I've been I've been looking at. Because people are so easily manipulated. They follow dude. you around. Man. Well, that's just like, it. You're going to have to be you know savvy to that. Which I believe the generation growing up right now that's growing up with this knows that they're not they're not naive to it. I hope so. I and hope I think so. our generation and the old and the and even older are the ones that are the chicken littles about it. That the sky is falling and it's like oh god, like they're gonna well, like no one horrible? gives a fuck about your life, bro. I'm sorry. Well, like, no, nobody but, gives a shit. You You've seen Minority Report. Yeah. Like, does that look, does that scare you? Because, yeah. like, going and walking down the street, like, and being able to have retina scans and all that, and like, 
like having things talk to you and mm-hmm. like know that you're there. Like it's, I swear we're building into that. Here's, here's the only, here's what worries me. What worries me is not that these private companies are doing that. Cause I don't know how far they can go in manipulating people. Mm. I mean, at some point if they figure out like a hack with your brain and then they can really fuck with you, that, that'd be different. But mm-hmm. so far it's like advertising. Fine. I don't have a problem with that. Here's the problem. The problem I have is the government gets really close to these companies. Well, that's the scare. That becomes a scare. Yeah. Now they use that to manipulate us and they have all that data. That's when I worry because they're the ones that... Yeah, uh, and they, they mandate it. Like well, they, I, you can only be, be manipulated if you allow yourself to be manipulated. Uh, I, I think mean, just, cause, just because... I think you got to be... I, I, you know what? History shows us that it's a lot... It were a lot. It's a lot worse than you think. I would think the same thing, and we all think, oh, I wouldn't get manipulated. I know what I'm... I don't know, man. People have done crazy shit throughout history. When you look back and go, how could you possibly allow that? Why would you guys do that? They were manipulated. And it's not that it's not that hard. I don't know. I, I think it's I feel like it's harder to manipulate now. I mean, you can do it at a faster rate and to and to more people because yeah. of the internet and the abilities we have. But then you also have the 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 counter ability as fast too. So I feel that's like, what I think too. So I feel like there's always going to be these checks and balances yeah. of when it, things get crazy and extreme. Like oh my god, they're I can't believe what's going on with all this hate speech, and we're yeah. going to lose it. We're going to lose our rights. Always and, pay attention. Yeah, then there's going to be the other side of it that's putting that out there, being like, no, we have to stand. And there's always going to be the rebellion. Yeah, the worry I'm is, guessing. yeah, that that's for you. Hey man, I'll tell you what. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just like Star Wars. Um, <laughs> he warned us, George Lucas, a long time ago, you guys. Like this, this regime was going to come so in. So that's the how the Republic dies with yeah. thunder supplies. Yeah, you, guys, you guys like hate on me for that. I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm a Jedi. Yeah. I don't remember you, what I was going to contribute. Exactly. So. You fucked him up, Adam. Yeah. Good job. Sorry. Yeah. It's all good. If you ever it's, say Star Wars, it distracts I wonder if your wife like knows that. I could think about it. I wonder if your wife knows that trick. Like, if you're arguing, you start to make a <laughs> she good point. She does. She just throws Star right. Wars in there. Or he's pressing really hard for sex. And yeah. she's like, hey, what's what Star Wars instead? He's like, oh, up. okay. Yeah. Like, Wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, There's yeah. a new, yeah, they even like introduced a new Sith Lord. Did they really? They did, yeah. Wow. Already, and this just got released. That was interesting. When's the next one coming, Justin? Uh, was it next year? I believe not. Not. And this one's supposed to be. Or is it the end? Of, is it December this year? I think it's December of next year. Yeah, it's it's nine. So yeah, they're writing all the scripts for nine right now, and they brought J.J. Abrams in to kind of try and salvage. You're good, because uh, the last one was a little shit happened. Oh, oh Darth Artrius. Rian- Artrius, thank you. Darth Artrius. Yeah, it's called. He's got, he has two of those like medieval looking. Oh God. Yeah. It's, it's so called that's kind the of, new Sith Lord. Yeah. Well, he, they're putting him in canon, so they don't know exactly where he's going to fall in as far as like... Dude, where. this is so going to be... Sorry to interrupt you. This is so going to be the the Marvel... Yeah, of course. It's, it's They're using the same playbook. Same yeah. playbook, yeah. dude. I mean, this is going to go... There's going to be Which, 30 of these things. Yeah, is this good or is this bad? I don't know yet. You know, I don't know. Like, it's going to exhaust, I think, a lot of the fans because it's just like, okay... I well, mean, they got younger generations they're trying right, to... It's brilliant. Yeah. It's brilliant on their part. It, yeah. it may lose the 30, 40, 50 year olds. But they're going to lose you guys anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're going to lose you guys. I'll stay them. with the, the, the main theme, right? The Skywalkers. And, you know, I want to, that's kind of like where I where I mm-hmm. stay. I saw that they were making another uh, Predator, and it looks like, are they trying to remake it, or is it another sequel to the shitty sequels that they've done oh, so really? far? Another uh, Predator, huh? Yeah. I thought it was maybe a prequel. <laughs> Is it? I hope. I, I I would love it if they would go back to like Predator canon, like when Arnold was in there. Because oh, after yeah. that, it just went to. I know. Shit. Predators was was actually it wasn't a bad movie. It was just that like I didn't like the actors in it. Yeah, I mean, part two was actually pretty. Remember with Danny, Danny Glover? Yeah, it was okay. It wasn't yeah, Arnold. It wasn't. Yeah, no, anything but it was. Close and then after the that, one. it just got. It just went to shit. So it did yeah. more than two. Yeah. Predator? Pre- yeah. They did. Then there's yeah. Predator, Predator versus Alien. Predator oh, 2 and then I, you know and what? The Predators. Predator vs. Alien got a lot of it got a lot of shit, but I actually I enjoyed it. it. I liked it. Uh, it's in my movie collection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's in my movie yeah, collection. Like, yeah. yeah that, was a, that was a gem. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not that it wasn't that great. I liked it. I don't know. Yeah. I, the the first Predator good. was so brilliant. It was so smart. The makeup was smart. The effects were smart. I mean, that was the remember the invisible effects that the Predator had? Yeah. That was back when was that movie made? I don't know. What was that, 1980-something? Yeah, and then they had the thermal uh, camera, so you, you only saw like the heat map of somebody walking around. Fucking brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. And you know that military now has shit that does that. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's pretty cool. Hey, I had a great time with you guys this weekend over at the 
Oh, oh yeah. man, House of Prime Ribs. How come I never heard shout of this out, place? Shout out to Jessica for hooking that one up because she, she, it was her client, I think, that told her about it, right? And yeah. then she hooked us yeah. all up with it. That Delicious. was the best prime rib ever. I've ever had. Now, let me tell you something, too. Like, prime rib's a big deal in, in my my family because we're my best friend's family who I have I used to have Christmas with every year. And that's like the tradition is that yeah. you have prime rib. Yeah, my mom Courtney's cooks a kill. Does that yeah, too. so we I, we eat a lot of prime rib and like and we go get like some crazy expensive one. And I both sides of my family do this. And so I've had some great prime rib in my life. And that was the best prime rib I've ever had in my it life. It might even be for me the best piece of meat. Yeah, it was like, really? so good, it, bro. It was. I mean, it, it was really good. For it sure. was so tender, so juicy. The horseradish that they gave me was incredible. Then you guys were everybody was was raving about the cream spinach or whatever. Yeah, that place was oh, so good. Yeah, no, I'm that. already we're talking about running it back. Yeah. I told Katrina. Oh, like, we got to go we back. Go there. Again. Yeah, it was yeah. so good. I had a good time a afterwards. Uh, I know you guys left early. Why'd you guys leave so early? Were you guys tired from all the moving and stuff? I dude, I had no desire to drink. Yeah, you can hang out. No, no. What do you mean no? Really, I'm not a fan of that, dude. I'm not a fan of because I'll drink. Yeah, because uh, it's just I'm not a fan of being the only person. We only not, had like two drinks. Doesn't matter in yeah. a in a bar environment. Yeah, I want drink, I want a drink. One, yeah. yeah. yeah and if we it. weren't in a competition, I 100 percent would have. And Katrina and I would have drank yeah. for sure. It was we had a good time. And we, that's I mean that to me like we're in the middle of of this competition. We're at the halfway point. God, it's all on record too. It's gonna suck if you lose after talking so much. <laughs> not drinking. Yeah. Be like, wow, I drank too. I'm not really worried. <laughs> I knew it was good. Doug is the only one I'm worried about, man. Yeah. Yeah. He's like an oak. Yeah. He came home with me. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like I bet he, he probably went to the gym afterwards, too. Yeah, uh, he was sad. In spite of that. Yeah. You know, he, he went home with you because you gave him a ride. Yeah. <laughs> he had no choice. <laughs> no, I asked him. I said, you want to stay with the kids and play, Doug, or what? He's like, yeah. no. Dude, didn't take much. I was pretty smashed. Yeah, bro, it's- Like when, two drinks. Yeah, that's it. We were, we were tipsy. But he took us, uh, Justin took us to this bar. What's it called? Tonga? The Tonga Bar. Have you ever heard of this bar Mm-mm. in San Francisco? If, if you're, It's like you're in a in a in a- I don't know, almost like a jungle inside. Yeah, they have like water. It rains. And it's yeah. rains. There's every thunder now and, and lightning and, and shit going on like in there. A pirate thing. It was a... it was really cool. Yeah, see, look at the pictures. It's a theme bar. It's crazy. It's, we had a, we had a good time. We we're having good conversation. So just it was me, Justin, Courtney, and Jessica, and we're all hanging out. And Jessica and Courtney are having a, you know great time conversing, and Justin and I are laughing. And next thing you know, the girls are talking about pooping. The whole what? time. Oh yeah, yeah, What's yeah, up with that? yeah. Oh yeah, when I, I feel so good after I have a good. Oh, you what? gotta try this, that, and, the other. and they're totally <laughs> rapping off each other, having a great time. And me and Justin are looking at each other like, yeah. man, you imagine if this was like a first date. Oh yeah, and our girls right. just start talking yeah. about how good it is to take a nice poop. Yeah, yeah. That's that's not typical. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> that's not no. a typical conversation. No, not at all. That's what happens? Did but, that kill the sexual vibe for uh, later on or what? No, nah, nothing. No nothing way, does that. Dude. No, yeah. no, no way. Yeah, no, no, no. I was yeah, on you my guys are both on a mission for that. Yes. Mine sober wants it, so it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were trying yes. to help help her out. Yeah, you know, yeah. to get you l- lubed up. Yeah, yeah, no, but we had a really good we had a really good time. Great dinner. Great. Drinks after. No, it was fun, man. Maybe what we'll do is we'll run. We'll run that exactly back when the comp is over, and then we'll fucking go out and we will plan to go out and drink afterwards. And I just want the prime rib, man. That was the best fucking. I got the I got the king cut, and then I had them sear it because I I literally could have ate two of those. I was like, uh, you know, I ate the the excess. Like they give you a little slice after that too. I could have probably eaten like a whole another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. was, And the salad was good. Everything. I have I've zero complaints about everything from the service the atmosphere the i mean it's expensive yeah right so yeah. it's, it's it i mean if you if well you're gonna pay you're gonna spend like 50 bucks a plate that's what it was it's not well you notice that expensive. too when the menu is bill. super simple like Freeze. that they yeah. master it <laughs> well but, yeah you know when they don't have that many items to choose from like that's they, a good they point. master it that's a very good yeah, point that's what they did i've been to restaurants like that in italy where there's restaurants in italy where you go in yeah and they have one, it's one thing yeah. and everybody's getting it and you sit down and then there's some of your, you know some of your best for. restaurants are like that. They, yeah. it's, they, the, the menu comes with one sheet. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, you have yeah, a couple, those couple are my off. favorite dude. No, no, Cause but, I know they, they give a shit. You what know? are some of the best restaurants you guys have ever been to? Ever? Yeah. Oh or where'd God. you place at the top? I well, guess. so, well, it depends on what I'm going for. Right. So yeah. my favorite filet is at the grill. Uh, my favorite ribeye is at the cellar. Um, my favorite fish God, where's my favorite fish that I have? You know what it has an incredible red snapper is actually on Santana Row. Um, 
uh, Sinos. Sinos oh, red really? snapper is amazing, even though I wouldn't recommend that normally for a fish place. I'd probably recommend somewhere like in Monterey or mm. uh, like that. But those are, you know, it's a great, you know, cheap, great restaurant that we eat at a lot is uh, uh, Orchard City Kitchen. Yeah, they are. For, they, yeah, for, they're, and they're, you good talk prices. About great, what they great get. prices. Yeah. It's, it's uh, farm to plate. It's a rotating menu. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple menu too. There's not a lot of things on it, but it's always rotating. So like even like, and there's always, there's one burger there, but every month it's a total different burger. And then the whole, the whole dish is complimented. So the French fries are seasoned to complement the burger yeah, really and like everything complements each other really mm -hmm. well. It's, Really, really good, and yeah. it's not that expensive. So yeah. it's a common date place for Katrina. That's and I. good. Yeah, I've been to I've been to a few because I love going to really nice, expensive restaurants. I love mm -hmm. the experience. So I've been to a few really nice places. Um, I you know I went to the what was that the the Ritz in Paris when I when I visit when I was in France. Mm. That was amazing. Uh, been to like Fleur de Lis in San Francisco and was at French Laundry and, but the the one restaurant and I don't know the name of it because it was a small little place in the hills of southern Italy. This was when I was, you know, when I was married, we would we would go to my ex-wife's town and the way her town works is it's on a beach, so you have the, you know, all the restaurants that are near the beach and then you if you go up to the hills, there's a it's a different feel and that's where the original town was built and then the rest of the town kind of built down towards the ocean. So we went up to the hills and we went to this restaurant that it was inside this I mean like I said it was a tiny little place and it was everything was fresh from their gardens and their animals. So they bring out this cheese plate and the cheeses they made themselves and the meats and the salamis they made themselves. And then they're bringing us these mushroom dishes that they collect in the hills themselves and lamb meat. And we ate for like three or four hours. It was the best meal I ever had in my entire life. Really? Ever. Yeah. You ever do that? You ever eat Sounds for like four good. hours? You ever sit at a restaurant and eat for like four hours? That's how I've everywhere before, in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. In Europe, yeah. that's how it is. Like oh. it's if you actually think you're going to get in and out there, that's the only way to do it. You you get all irritated. Like they you, they they rarely come back to the table. They leave you for like 20 minutes yeah, and they true. come back. It's like you see the waiter go outside and smoke a cigarette. Yeah, dude. It, 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 <laughs> it, if you're like Americans are like, what the fuck, dude? Can I get a bill or can I get a refill? They don't here? bring you your bill unless you ask them either. It's yeah. super rude over in Europe. It's considered. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whereas here they bring you the bill with. Yeah, you. they'll let you sit Drop there all day long, yeah. and that's it's common. It's common yeah. for people to do that to yeah. sit there, and then some of them will smoke in between, like you know, courses. It's funny. But dude. those are the meals where they're they're you're painfully eating like towards you know two hours into it and i'm like i don't know if i'm gonna You've had a five six course meal at I, that point i know why the romans had vomitariums you know what vomitariums are right no. the romans used to fucking party so hard and eat so much food at these parties that they'd go to these vomitariums and make themselves throw up yeah. so they could eat more that's the definition of excess right that's there. what they used to do yeah what? yeah they were actually called i think that's the name of it vomitoriums or vomitarium i don't remember if that the, the exact name vomitarium but they were actual rooms that's what it was for so when you're out, when you're hanging out, and everybody's drinking and eating and drinking and eating, and then you're like, I can't eat anymore. Well, go go to the the vomitorium or <laughs> Don't whatever. They call that bulimia. Yeah, that's what they call it nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's what it was back then. Popular back, term. Now. Back when it was cool, yeah, they called it something. Back when it was cool. Yeah, but yeah, that's what the, they would do. It's like it's time. Yeah, but I'm, I'm like, I, I get it when you eat these huge, massive meals. I remember afterwards, we got back to the house and I laid down on the bed and I was just like, Yeah, oh, I hate myself. It's too much. Yeah. Would I do it again? Yes. Yeah. I totally would do it again. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from Joe Pushner. My mom lifts and works out, and she's in her 50s, but I'm curious what her main focus should be. Mobility and strength over more cardio-focused? Prioritizing correct form over increased movement? The typical yes. formula to follow when you train anybody, okay, not just somebody in their 50s, but anybody when they first start working out, it starts with uh, correctional exercise always because you want to set. That's the irony of this, right? Yeah. It's like it's. Uh, it doesn't matter that she's fifty. Mm -mm. Yeah. You know, of course, because she's fifty, uh, it's even more important. But it really is how everybody should be focused at first. Everybody should be trying to work on. You know, I just got into this like thing back and forth on YouTube over the 
bicep shoulder flexion thing. And I was explaining to this guy, like, absolutely that that's part of it. Like it's impossible to not incorporate the shoulders in a full bicep flexion. Right. Mm -hmm. I said, but teaching that to somebody who doesn't have really good sound mechanics will force them to probably let something else take over. And so teaching them really strict mechanics first, then you can get away with other types of tips and movements. And that's just from experience. And the same thing goes with something like this, Mm -hmm. like, you know, even somebody who's 20 or 30, they should be doing these exact same things too to start off before you do anything high intensity or before you go after cardio or before you do cheat sets or before you do, you know, anything like that, right? Yeah, if you don't set a solid foundation with good movement to begin with, all you'll be strengthening later on is bad movement or Mm -hmm. or not ideal movement. So so I want to kind of reiterate that so it makes better sense to people. If you don't if you don't sit there and focus on correctional exercise so they have ideal movement, what will end up happening is you'll take them through a workout and you'll build strength. And they will get stronger. They will get stronger without correctional exercise. The problem is what you will be strengthening is how they move, how, how they've always moved, which if they're deconditioned, how they're moving is probably, okay, highly likely to be not ideal. And what you don't want to do is strengthen a bad movement pattern because it only increases risk of injury and pain and joint degeneration. But besides all that, even let's say somebody just, you know, has the the best luck in the world and they strengthen poor movement patterns and they never get hurt. Fine. But you're still not going to be able to achieve what you can achieve strength wise and performance wise and building muscle and fat loss wise because ideal movements encourage uh, better ranges of motion, which are better for muscle development, strength, and all those other things. So yeah. you always start with correctional. Well, and it's uh, talking about mobility as a focus too. I think some people have like a misconception behind that as far as like trying to increase the goal is to increase range of motion. No, the goal is to get your joint to function the way it's properly supposed to function and to be set in place to where like it has all the supporting uh, muscular activity to kind of also slow down movement to uh, adjust for forces that are exterior to you. Um, so it really what we're doing is we're, we're trying to, to, to fortify the joints uh, through taking it through ranges of motion and taking it through activity. Um, a lot of times it's just the fact that you're just not active uh, in certain directions and movement wise. And so your body doesn't respond the way that it, it should and the, the way that it's properly uh, set up to, to, to perform. And so to be able to go through that process and kind of figure out and identify, uh, you know, the problematic type of movement patterns you've established just by everyday life. Like it's just, these are all things that are very important, especially going into, you know, your fifties, your sixties mm-hmm. and then so on. I remember when I first really put this together, although the certifications do, NASM does a good job of teaching this. They teach correctional exercise before anything else. But I remember when I really put it together and I would start training clients and, you know, cause what happens when you get a client is you want to show them results right away and that's what they want. And so you would do your correctional exercise, but then you would also make them sweat and make them sore because you're trying to make them happy. And I remember when I started really putting it together later on as a trainer and just saying, look, I'm to myself, like I am not benefiting them at all, even though I'm doing this to placate them, it's not benefiting them at all. And so I, I just was stuck to my guns and really focused on correctional exercise. And the results they got was were better. It actually happened faster. I was going to say, once you put that together, you realize that you can get them as good of results just as fast if you just do some other things. Like for me, I had the exact same feeling, Sal, where I was trying to appease what they wanted, right? Because they come in and they say, oh, I just want to lose 15 pounds. Yeah. But you know better that they're not moving properly and there's other things that need to be addressed. And in the past, I would I would default to that because I was afraid I'd lose a client and I wanted to re-sign them. So I needed to show them the scale going down or whatever. And so... I fell victim to this many, many times until I realized like, shit, if I could actually just getting them moving better, balance out their nutrition correctly, and then increase their knee or movement. Back then I wasn't, wasn't aware of need. I was just telling them to walk and move more, you know, and move more properly. Uh, They would see as good of results, if not better and just as quick really too. So it's, it's kind of, maybe if you just looked at it a snapshot of one or two weeks, but over the course of six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, I can show somebody just as good of, uh, as just as much improvement and change in their physique without ever allowing them to go out and run. And that's probably the worst thing that she could do is to run. Oh, 
I mean, running at that age more than like. I mean, unless we, she has like perfect running, which yeah, which running is mechanic, unlikely. Yeah, it is unlikely. Yeah. And and if it is, we probably wouldn't. If she's got great running mechanics, then we wouldn't even be having this discussion probably. So, mm-hmm. you know, and this is why too, I highly recommend Prime because Prime One has the attest in there, so you can test her movement, her mobility. And then it has fortification sessions. So there's sessions in there to help her do exactly what Justin was talking about. You pair that with a program like MAPS Anabolic, and that's the perfect program to start almost anybody, but most certainly somebody mm-hmm. who's 50 years old that you're concerned about mobility. Here, here's an example when, we're, when I'm talking about or when we're, we're mentioning movement patterns and stuff and how your body, if you strengthen the wrong movement pattern, you'll get better at it. And you, your body, your body's always trying to aim to become better and more efficient at whatever you do the most of. Okay. So I'll give you a good example. You, the, a human being, the average human being through practice can throw something faster and farther overhand, right? Like overhand is the ideal way to throw something for a human being. Now, if you were to take a, a, a softball player, a female softball pitcher, I bet you she could throw faster and harder underhand. And that's because she's been practicing that movement pattern over and over again. Now, does that mean that underhand pitching is superior in terms of speed and distance? No. Her body just got really fucking good at doing it that way because that's how she's always practiced. And so my point with this is if your mom is moving in a way that's not ideal and you don't do correctional exercise with her, she will get stronger, she will build muscle, she will improve body fat percentage and all that stuff, but the problem is that she's going to get stronger in her bad uh, movements and the way that she's moving now, which is if she's deconditioned, it's not a great way to move. So she'll still get results. And this is where people get confused. Cause people, people say, well, I didn't do that. And I get great results and I don't train my clients that way. And they lose weight and get in shape. Well, sure. But risk of injury goes up and you'll never reach your full potential. That's the big one. The big one is <clears throat> that there are movement patterns that will allow you to reach further heights than other movement patterns. And if your goal is to progress long-term and to continue to improve and feel better over time, especially as you age, there are movement patterns that are superior to others. And you have to solidify those early on in the training. You have to do that in the beginning because I'll tell you what right now, it's easier for me to give to correct imbalances and decondition people than it is to correct imbalances in highly conditioned people. Highly conditioned people are a fucking monster. Have you guys ever had an athlete I had a pitcher, I had a high school pitcher who came in who was pitching his whole life and had such a crazy disparity between his right and left hand because he's been pitching since he was a child. Do you know how hard that was to correct because he'd been doing it and training it for so long? Mm -hmm. I would have been better off had he never pitched at all. That would have started him off in a much better position. And so what you don't want to do is is, is, you know, skip that step, train your mom, get her strong, whatever, and then she later on say, my shoulder hurts, my knee hurts. My back bothers me. Now you're doing this whole reverse thing where you're trying to figure out, okay, how do we correct imbalances? We got to reteach her how to squat. We got to reteach her how to overhead press because they're moving. And now you're in this uphill battle. And it's really, really difficult. Well, this is also why, too, we, we've always talked about our programs being moldable and that we encourage people to modify them for specific people. Like, I don't know what your, your 50 year old mother's imbalances look like. And I wouldn't know that until I took her through like a test like Prime. But once I'd figured that out, and I knew, and I would use that tool like Prime and Prime Pro. They're both designed as like a, a tools for you mm-hmm. to complement these programs. I then go and I go, okay, X, Y, and Z are the three movements that's going to help my moms and balance out. So I'm going to now implement those into Maps Red, and maybe I'm going to get rid of the trap exercise and maybe the calf raises or something because that's not really going to benefit my mom that much, and she'd be far better off doing these movements that are going to help correct her imbalances and so i'm gonna and then i also i'm still gonna strength train her because i know the benefits of that health wise and muscle wise and metabolism wise that i'm gonna do for her but at the same time too i'm gonna i'm gonna need to program these other exercises that are specific to yeah. her it's really like i look at it as is building up this ritual that they carry on with them going forward because of to counter basically like all the life that they've done before that like it's like okay here's here's what you need to do on a constant basis just to you know counteract a lot of those effects but you still need to train you still need to you know add add load to to the joints and to you know make sure we get that resistance training in but this is this is going to be like part of your thing every day now. Yeah, yeah. If, right. if there was one message that I could, if I if I could just sell this better than any than any other message, I would be so happy. And that's this: a long time ago, working out 
It, see, exercise used to be about skill. So you used to go to a gymnasium. It's a long time ago, by the way. We're talking about way before I started working out. And people would go in there to perfect and practice movements. So if you were trying to go to the gymnasium, yeah. it wasn't about getting sore and burning calories and sweating. That was never the the idea. It, it was, was like getting good at a movement. Yeah, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to learn how to do a, a, a parallel bar dip or I'm going to learn how to do a handstand. Yeah, or climb I'm, some ropes. I'm going to learn or, how to climb ropes, yeah. right. Then it turned into... Once we realized you're burning calories, once we realized, oh, you're getting sore and building muscle, and that's the side effect, then it became, you're not going to the gym to learn skills, you're going to the gym just to get sore and sweat, and so that's what happens. People go to the gym, and they don't think about skills, they're thinking about, oh, I'm going to sweat and get sore because I want to look better and burn more calories and all that stuff. Well, that's a mistake. If you treat exercise like it's skills, like, okay, I'm going to the gym today, here's my workout. You're looking at your exercise. Okay, I want to perfect my squat. I want to perfect my press. I want to you know, perfect my overhead press. I want to perfect my curl. And you're practicing them as skills and trying to get better at them like you would any other skill, like you would if you were learning how to rollerblade or, or, or skateboard or whatever, where if you're trying to skateboard, do you go out and get on a skateboard and just go you know, crazy to get sweaty and sore? No, you go perfect the skill of it. If you treat exercise that same way, far better results. Far better results and you'll many times... You won't get trapped in those, you know, those traps that people get uh, stuck in where it's all about getting sore and making their bodies painful because you'd go in and you would just be like, ooh, my squat is off. I got to perfect my technique and just practice it like any other skill. Boy, the results will be so much better, way less injuries, and you get that consistent progress for a long time rather than hitting those plateaus that people get stuck in because they don't view workouts as skills. Right. Next question is from Kelzar the Magnificent. Mm. <laughs> Kelzar the Magnificent. When you speak of the body adapting to cardio and resulting in less muscle mass and a slower metabolism, do you think the same would apply to someone with a very physically demanding job? Okay, so... 100%. Yeah, it would, but I will say this. Because a physically demanding job tends to be spread out throughout the entire day, because they've done studies on this, and they'll find that when people do cardio at one time, like an hour or two hours at once versus 30 minutes split up or 20 minutes three times a day. But your body is adapted faster. Yeah, they find that the splitting yeah. it up re- results in more fat loss and less of that muscle you know, down regulation or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, you're going to get – your body adapts to whatever you do a lot of. Your body eventually gets good at it, and you burn less calories. But that doesn't mean you don't get the the benefits, uh, the health benefits. That's the thing right. I'm going to be clear yeah, on. There's still blood flow. There's still oxygen moving through there. That means more nutrients Maintain getting to your muscles. Fitness. Yeah, there's better posture probably because you're moving around versus sitting down in a desk. So Yeah, because we make the case about the slower metabolism with cardio. And I think people are now so scared to do cardio because of that. And I'm getting these messages. And it's like, look, if you do some cardio and activity throughout the day, you're getting a lot of the health benefits. Forget the all we're saying is don't make cardio like the cornerstone of your fat loss. Right. You know, uh, that's routine. not your gauge for just like burning fat. No, like, no, no. But but if you move, ideal. I've done cardio and built more muscle. I mean, yeah. why? Why have I built more muscle doing cardio? Because it made me healthier. You know, I've gone I've gone so extreme in one direction where I did no cardio. Right. To where if I got on a treadmill and walked at a three and a half on an incline, I'm out of breath. So then I just did that a little bit. Now my cardiovascular. Health goes up a little bit. Next thing you know, I can work out harder and I built more muscle. Right. Yeah. So it's not as black and white as you think. But yeah, definitely, it definitely will start to, over time, what ends up happening is your body burns less and less calories doing the same activities just because you become efficient. You know what I mean? You become super efficient at them. You ever, I remember going to work with my dad and he would, he had this, this trowel, this big flat metal square that he would hold with handle and it would have uh, fat mud on it. And this is, Stuff you throw, you, you put up on the wall, it's really sticky and heavy. And he'd have a whole pile of it on it. And then he'd have another trowel in his other hand. And he'd do this thing where he'd like scoop it off onto the, onto the smaller trowel, fling it up on the wall. And he'd do this through the whole wall. And then he'd spread <laughs> yeah. it. And I remember thinking, like, that looks so fun and easy. You know, I told <laughs> my dad, like two times doing it, you're probably burnt. <laughs> bro, I told my I remember I was like 16 years old. I was like, dang, that looks so fun. That looks so easy. And my dad's like, you think it's easy? He's like, give it a shot. So first off, that shit's heavy. Just to hold it. There's yeah. a whole pile of fat mud on there. That's like it's like holding a twenty pound dumbbell. Yeah, it's like twenty pound dumbbell. So I was like, oh my god. Yeah. And then to flip it onto my hand, I didn't have the technique, so it would go all over the floor. Plus, my hands and wrists were getting tired. And then you realize, like, I'm prob- I'm doing way more work than he is because I'm not efficient. Yeah. So that's why your body adapts that way. It just gets really good at your physically, 
you know, demanding job. Now, when you guys have somebody like this, do you typically recommend any sort of list cardio on top of that or anything else? Or do you think they're moving so much already? They're getting most of the good benefits. Now yeah. it's really heavy Usually, strength based. Yeah. Resistance training to counteract, you know, like anything that's taking them out of ideal posture and like, you know, helping them to kind of, um, you know, fortify their joints that are that are involved in a lot of those everyday movements. Because like, you know, painters and like reaching all the time, like we have to you know, account for that and, and be able to then get other parts of their body active and contributing yeah. and stabilizing. Yeah. Now, not to stereotype, but in my experience as a personal trainer, training clients who, I've trained many clients who do blue collar, uh, demanding, high demanding jobs from construction workers to plumbers to stone workers and, and roofers, right? I've trained a lot of them. Typically their diet's terrible, okay? That culture, I think, fosters uh, bad eating. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I'm not quite sure why. Maybe because they. Of Doritos. Yeah, they go out to eat. And, Donuts for breakfast. And they get away they with it a lot of times because they're. Because you're moving so much. Yeah, they're so yeah, active. That's how, that's what, I think yep. that's where the culture comes from is that, I mean, that when I was a kid and I used to go to work with my dad, my stepdad, who was the carpenter. I mean, that's that was a staple thing. We're at five o'clock in the morning. You swing by the donut shop. You get a dozen donuts yep. for all the guys. You go to Seven Eleven. You know, yeah, in between seven, and yes, and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, that was all. But you're Dash moving all burritos. day. You're moving all day long. That so you all can, you have is a little bit of a belly, right? You know what I mean. But you're eating a bunch of garbage, right? Yeah, that's what I would see. Yeah. So if you're trying to get lean, uh, and again, I'm stereotyping, but if you're like most of the guys I've trained who've done this kind of work. Just all I would do when I get clients like this, here's what I would do. If especially if they had really physically demanding jobs, I would have them lift weights two days a week. That's it. We'd do two full body routines a week, mm-hmm. focusing on big compound movements, and then I'd have them fix their diet, and that's it. They'd all get lean and they'd all build muscle because yeah. they were already fit from moving all the time. It was like the results were. You throw cardio on top of that, that is not yeah. well. Be good. And, and the things too that we don't know Just that excess. could make this even harder is if you are the exception to the rule guy or girl that has actually got a job like this and then you also don't eat because I've like trained nurses like on this right so and this was always a struggle with me I'd have I remember one time this client that I had that you know she was well over 100 pounds overweight she was a nurse who worked you know 12 hour plus shifts the 12 and the 16 hour shifts and she ate like twice you know, and she moved like crazy, and she'd been doing that for a long time. So this person so is she a, wasn't feeding herself enough, right? And hadn't been feeding herself enough for a very long time. So this could also present a really, really tough client mm-hmm. to help because if you've been under consuming, it's helping the guy or girl who's started their day off with eight glazed donuts and Dorito fire Doritos throughout the day, three beers at lunch, and then the Taco Bell after work. And that person's easy because mm-hmm. they're eating five, six thousand calories of pretty much garbage once you balance out their nutrients and give them what their body needs and maybe give them some yeah, good strength. Change. Yeah, huge change. But there is someone who's really challenging that I've trained that's in this category, which is they're the ones who don't eat very much. They might eat, you know, have their coffee. They don't have anything. And then they eat lunch. They have like a conservative sandwich and then they have a dinner and that's all they eat. But yet they're moving 20, 30,000 steps a day and doing laborious type jobs. And their body has adapted Mm -hmm. now to eating very minimal and moving a lot. And that person has a long road ahead of them. It could be tough to put on some muscle for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and just to burn a lot. I think less to build muscle because that person feed a little extra calories and lift, lift well they'll build they're typically harder to lose body fat which is what yeah, most of them want metabolism wanted. is just so right slow. the metabolism is slowed down so much so you know not knowing the full details yeah. here that person could be how many that. days a week would you guys have these guys because i found two days a week to be generally the ideal amount for really physically demanding like physically active. Yeah. yeah like if, when i would go more than two days a week with these guys it was too much <laughs> And it's because they're swinging hammers and well, shit all see, day long. I, and that, to me, it depends on if they're the if they're the fed one we're talking about or not. If you're mm-hmm. someone who's healthy, fed, and your movement, and you're active, then it's you know it's no different than the kid at the playground who's playing all the time and moving and still. Yeah. You know, I, so I see nothing wrong with it. But if you are falling in that category of someone who has their metabolism has adapted mm-hmm. to just slowing down and conserving energy because you don't eat very much then absolutely a two-day-a-week routine yeah. is where I would go for sure. One summer, I – let's see. I want to say it was my the summer after my freshman year is where I put on – there was a summer I put on almost 15 pounds uh, all just in the summer, which is a lot for a, a kid, especially you know natural kid or whatever. And I was working with my dad at the same time. And I remember you know, when you do that kind of work, especially if you're not used to it, you come home and you're – I remember my body would be buzzing. I'd be so fried from doing all that work, mixing cement. So what I used to do is, uh, you know, I, this is, and this is also simultaneous when I learned how to really squat and deadlift from those power lifters 
at the gym. So then after work, I'd go to the gym and lift weights. And I remember for the first week of doing this routine, working with my dad and lifting weights, I lost like two pounds. And I was like, what the fuck? So I told, you know, some of my powerlifter buddies, and like, you just got to fucking pound food, man. You just got to eat more food. So I went on a mission and I literally for breakfast, I'm not exaggerating, before we'd walk out the door, a quart of whole milk, I drink that. And then we go to McDonald's on the way there. And then for lunch, I'd eat this huge lunch. And then I'd come home and eat another. I was probably eating like six or 7,000 calories a day to try and offset it. But I did put on about 15, 15 pounds of lean body mass. <laughs> I remember going to school and, and the, the couple of girls were like, oh my God, you have a butt now? I was like, what? Yeah. I didn't have a butt before? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> Baby's got back. Yeah. All right. Next up is from Attractive Juan. Attractive Juan. Yeah. Uh, hey at there. Mind Pump Doug. I guess that's me. That's you, Doug. What is it like working with those three knuckleheads? Hey, Juan, what the fuck? <laughs> Best and worst memory? Would you change anything about them? Oh, wow. Yeah. Did you think about what this is, for a minute, Doug? Yeah, what is it like working with us? Knuckleheads. Oh. Well, it's the roller coaster for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it really? No, it's not that bad. Yeah. You get the impression maybe that that might be the case, but it's really pretty mundane here on a day-to-day basis, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel like we have that many that many hiccups or, or that much drama or anything like that. Do you feel like that? No, not really. I feel like, um, especially over the, year, over the years, you guys have become a little bit more focused. I remember at the beginning, I think the biggest challenge and frustration for me was that there were just so many things that we were wanting to do. I mean, we had this vision of becoming this business that we're going to handle everything. Right. You know, all aspects of fitness, one-stop shop, mind pump. And that just gave me uh, sleepless nights, basically, (laughs) because- Because you were the one putting it I was the one doing all the work behind the scenes, right? Yeah, yeah. But over time, what's happened is you guys have become a little bit more focused- Mm. And I think, you know, having the outside marketing company helping us and Casey helping us, you know, stay focused here, it's been a big help for yeah, sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. I, I, you know, we've, we've had some big challenges too, personal challenges throughout this, this, this business. Right, right. You know, I had, I was going through my divorce early on. Then you had your, you know, where you went off all your, your testosterone, which mm-hmm. took, that took a while. And, and then a torn Achilles. And a torn Achilles. And, and you know, uh, you know, Justin went through, you know, do, building his other business and growing that and then watching that thing or whatever. Yeah. We've all had these big personal challenges in, early on in Mind Pump. And, you know, it's funny. I was, when, when Doug was reading this question, I was thinking about that and um, how perfect it is that that all happened early on. Because mm-hmm. I think, because those were some very, ch- look. I can speak for myself. I know you guys were challenged for, with your own things, and I could witness and see how that, that affected you. But I can speak for myself. Easily the most challenging time of my life. Right. I easily. Mean, and I could say the same thing about the the hormonal thing. So coming off testosterone, the dip in in, in te- natural testosterone and feeling that feeling what that felt like. Right. It was borderline depression for me. And then to tear my Achilles in in result of trying to find something else to lift my spirit yeah. was probably one of the hardest things I've ever gone. The only other time I could think of was and I and I've mentioned this before is when I sold my short sold my house. That was a really tough time for me too. This was probably the the next hardest time that I'd ever gone through. So yeah, no, for us all to kind of go through situations like that while also building a business of this size. I feel like it was it was like perfect. Yeah. No, I'm glad. I'm glad that it, that it happened. And too, it taught me a lot of lessons like when I was trying to take on way too much shit at, at once. I didn't think there was a limit. You know, I didn't I didn't think that um, you know, I thought I thought I could just handle it all and be able to maintain balance and be, you know, a good father, good husband and like be a, a good friend, good contributor to the business and all these types of things and it was just so naive and it fucking kicked my ass. And, you know, that was a hard, hard, hard lesson and it took a toll on my body and, you know, I recovered and everything. But yeah, I I feel like, yeah, we all kind of got really tested and challenged along this. It was what, a year and a half in, I would say. When would you say that when everybody walked away from any other projects or businesses? About a year and a half. Yeah, about a year and a half. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. because the first year everyone had to. We weren't even monetizing. Yeah, we had to. I had to make money. And then we started monetizing. And it was probably six months or less after that that I let go of most of I let go of most everything, and then everybody kind of slowly did after after mm-hmm. that. It, so it was about two years, I would say, once everyone had kind of walked away from. No, I think it's else. I think it's perfect the way it happened because for me, what it sh- what what I got out of it, watching you guys go through your challenges, is it, you know you want to know that your team is there. You know you want to know that your team will be 
consistent and will show up and will do what needs to be done, even though shit is you know hitting the fan and the personal front. And you guys both proved that when you guys were going through your own thing. On the flip side, when I was going through my thing, what proved to me is that you guys were there to hold me up and hold things up when I was going through one of the most challenging times of my entire life. And I think it's perfect that it happened in the beginning. Mm-hmm. That's not something I'd want to go through, you know, six years into the business. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah. God. Then you you uh, add in too that was well, not even a, what, a year, Doug, a year ago when you lost your parent. I mean, that's yeah, a, that's yeah. a big yeah. deal to yeah. lose a yeah. parent yeah. right now yeah. at, the, at this time too. So I mean, every, isn't that crazy? There's a lot. That's what I'm saying. It's weird when you think about this. There's been some big fucking things, very trying times that have happened. You know, early on. Well, and uh, and a lot. I think in the past, in in other business, because I've had a lot of partnerships. Um, and and a lot of them, I've remained still good friends, but the businesses didn't continue. Uh, partnerships are hard, and I whenever yeah. I like a, a couple times, uh, this has been a, a topic of discussion when I've been interviewed, and I always tell people I don't recommend partnerships. I think this is a very unique situation the yeah. way this all worked out, and I kind of give the analogy what it reminds me of, like a law firm where it's not really like this. You know, this is your position. This is your position. This is your position, and like everyone's responsible for a certain amount. Everyone's measuring. Everybody does what what they need to. Yeah, everyone kind of contributes to the same pot, and everyone's always and everyone's so focused on contributing to that that there's never any time to sit back and say, "Oh, he's doing more for the business than this person," or "This is more valued." Like none of that ever happens. No, it's funny because in in a lot of ways we all have these egos, right? Of course, you know. Um, but on the, in a, a lot of other ways, I always get um, I'm so grateful that everybody has egos, but then everybody also knows how to put it aside. That's the thing that I think is uh, unique. Is, as yeah, well. because yeah. you know, if we're doing something, and it, 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 here's the deal: when you have a bunch of people working together, in this case, it's, it's us guys, right? And all of us in our own right is a bit of a control freak. freak. All of us in our own right tends to be alpha, tends to want to- Competitive. Competitive, wants right. to do things. But you know that, that could be a tough situation because you could be working with someone, they could do something better than you or whatever, and you could not like that because you're not the one doing it. But right. all of us are kind of like, oh, cool, you do that. You know, and everybody's cool about it. There's no well, the, the and thing, it's a very that's a very unique thing. It's very it, it is unique, and I've had moments of it in my life, and I'm sure Justin could speak this too. It's what is unique to me is that you and Doug fit so well in this, where it reminds me of sports, mm-hmm. and when I, I've played on teams where we have some of the most athletic players or some of the best players, and we weren't the best team. Mm-hmm. And the reason why we weren't the best team is for that exact reason that you just pointed out is that we've got these talented, massive egos in their own right. And because of it, uh, it, it as a team, we never were great. But we, when you find a, a team where everybody ha- has got those massive egos, they're super competitive, they're super talented, but then they care more about winning than mm-hmm. themselves. And they truly, like a lot of people could say that, like, mm-hmm. yeah, I just, I want to win. But yeah, but at the yeah. same time too, you want the glory, you want to be recognized, mm-hmm. you want to be the face, you want to be the man. You know, it's a like- great analogy. I've thought of this quite a bit, actually, why it works the way it works. And in my mind, as far as like, you know, checking myself or just like contributing, like I remember being on a winning team, like when I was in high school and that was how it was. There was just stars all over the place. Like you'd have, somebody like and I knew I could count on them for this very specific aspect Mm -hmm. of what we were trying to achieve but then again you know like me like I knew I had to step my game up to elevate the team as a whole and so it was always this looking at each other like making sure we're all we're all striving for the best and sharpening each other so that's that's something we definitely share you know in this business which is unique and I think what's important is that everybody in everybody in here which I think is kind of crazy is everybody could do what another guy does, right? Everybody can do that part of that person's sure, job sure. if need be, if they had to. But what everybody also recognizes is that there's a guy at, out of the four of us that is better at something, at everything, and everyone just kind of lets go about it. It's just like, and that, and that, the only, there's, every, there's only sometimes there's moments of that, that struggle of like, oh, and then, and then one of us ends up letting go of it and be like, you know what? At the end of the day, like, I, I trust Justin to do that. Like mm-hmm. I just trust him to do that and to do it better than me. And even if even if I would do it better this one time overall, he's going to do that yeah. that area or that part of the business better. Isn't that than a great I'm, feeling though. Yeah, it, yeah, it's also kind of a great feeling because I, I've never really experienced that in the past working with with other people. I've had partners also, but I've never really experienced that before. 
So it is pretty cool. But it's not like it's all roses and fucking daisies. No, no. no. There's yeah. definitely challenges and all that stuff. But, no, man. But, I mean, I would. I mean, it's great. I like that. I know where everybody stands at any given moment. I'm never like, whoa, what well, are that's- thinking? I wonder what's, you know, yeah. I know, you know what I mean? I know exactly <laughs> no what everybody's. conspiring against yeah, anybody. Yeah, there, yeah, no, it's a, it's a very, uh, it's a, it's a great. Well, um, I was, I was doing, team. I was mentoring Taylor and stuff like that and giving him some insight on, on tough conversations that all of us have that, that not, that p- nobody gets to see, you know, that we have all the time, all yeah. the time. We have very, very hard, uncomfortable conversations, but there's always this respect level for each other that it's never this personal thing it's always about the business and each other and us and us winning again and if what happens a lot of times i think in situations like that that easily can just be not talked about someone could just be like uh it's not that big of a deal i don't really care i'm not going to speak my mind or ruffle feathers and then feelings right then nothing gets said and then it then it then it builds and builds and builds and it it gets resentment right Mm -hmm. versus I'm going to say something that is may not be popular and it may rub somebody the wrong the wrong way at first, but it's it's what how I'm feeling and I'm going to come that way at them versus wait instead of suppressing it mm-hmm. and allowing it to build up and then resentment and then attitudes and things like that happening where we're everybody in here is really good about that if they feel about something they speak it and then we have dialogue around it and sometimes the dialogue's heated and it's firing back and forth and arguing and it's no and I'm nah, and it's going back. Back and forth with making points, but we get it out, right? And we get it out. And then something that you guys do, which reminds me of my relationship with Katrina that I talked about on the show the other day that I absolutely love is that no matter where the disagreement happens when we leave, I feel like every guy doesn't try and strengthen their argument. They go try and see it from the other guy's perspectives. Like It's done. Yeah. It's like, I, that's the worst fucking I hate you know I used to, this is how I would manage people many times is, is I'd be like look we're gonna fix this now yeah. we're done with it we're done right. and that's it you keep talking about it afterwards that's where you get that resentment and the bullshit and all that other crap but they were asking you your best and worst memories Doug give us some and of those we, we ran with it yeah give yeah, us yeah, some, what are some yeah, yeah. yeah what are some good and bad memories this was my question after all hijacked <laughs> 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 no uh, let me just go with the worst memories first and most of the worst memories were of my own doing. For example, in Florida, I think it was Florida, where oh, I forgot no. the backpack oh, in the back God. of a rental car. Poor Doug. And had all the, well, I thought it had all the memory cards for all the episodes we did down in, in Tampa. And, oh, man, that was like, my heart dropped. Ugh. That's the most scared I've ever seen I, you. Yeah, yeah, man. I was like so stressed out. None of us, none of us could really get upset because you were so stressed out and upset about oh, it. Oh yeah, we was, were just all like, "Let's just hope Doug's cool." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I was more concerned Good about feelings. the aftermath because, yeah. oh, by the way, guys, uh, all the interviews, I've lost them all. Oh God, that would have never. That would have been. <laughs> so yeah, that was probably one of my worst times um, since doing this business. The other one was too right after we had what's his name Ben, the bachelorette guy. Oh, Ben Zorn. Ben Zorn. Ben Zorn. Ben Zorn. Yeah, we had him oh, on the yeah. show, and he I was like our, our biggest interview. Oh, I remember this. That we had ever had. This he was, was like early a huge on. social media following. We had no real exposure at that time. Yeah. And so we really anticipated that episode was going to be the episode that would kind of catapult us. Yeah. Not really knowing anything about social media mm. and influence. But anyway, at that time, our hosting service was not Libsyn. It was another company that we had utilized. That's right. And it just so happened to go down on us the day that that episode in not dropped. In a good way. Right. And, yeah. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I think Adam and I were texting you oh, like every man. five minutes. Yeah. I, could, I could feel all the tension. And, of course, I felt the weight of the world on my shoulders. <laughs> yeah. And I was trying to resolve this issue. This episode was supposed to be going up. Ben had you know, texted it out to his... Well, and the concern was that he had signed a non-disclosure with NBC. Oh, we got all conspiracy theories. Right, and that's <laughs> what... ABC or whoever. Or ABC, yeah, whoever. I don't forget who the bachelor Do you remember that? But he <laughs> signed a non-disclosure and he yeah. wasn't allowed to talk about the certain show and we aired something that we were... I remember we all talked about like... We're like, oh shit, did they shut us down? Yeah, and so we like all... Like anybody gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> we had like, we had we like, like three listeners. weeks yeah. into the program. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like a hundred listeners. There's probably a little more than that, but... No, no. There's probably like a thousand we were a few months in. Yeah. <laughs> like I forgot about that, that, Doug. I forgot all about that. Oh, yeah. So that was that was a very stressful moment for me. And then come to find out, we finally got the episode up, and yeah, the, we got a little bump. 
<laughs> it didn't matter. Yeah, like didn't five matter. more people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not many people were listening at that time. No, that was a good lesson though, too. Speaking on the business, I mean, that was a, a yeah. big learning curve for us. I mean, Doug's right. I mean, at that point, we had never had anybody with over a hundred thousand followers uh, post that, about us. Yeah, post about us or been on the show or anything at the time. And I knew Ben, and I remember inviting him down and having him show him. Man, we were just like, "This is gonna. This is all we needed. We just need, <laughs> yeah, we need we one just, person. We just need one person to give us some exposure, following. and it's game over." Yeah, like, we were, and it was like flat. <laughs> then we'll be like Oprah, and it was like I remember that was a that was a moment of like, "Oh yeah. shit, this is not going to be as easy as I thought it was going to be." Where we just <laughs> you know, one person. Who yeah, was, three and a half years into it, we're still waiting for that person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Come on, please, someone. No, this is why Oprah, I, t- I on, talk about like this all the time on shows. Is like it's not what people think it is and in fact you know the the adding 10 or 20 people a day you know when you do the math on that and it's so hard we, we everybody compare if you're in this type of a space you're comparing yourself to you know the people that have millions of followers have have, yeah. have gained this fame or went viral whatever and so you're comparing your business to that like and when you start doing the calculations and you go wait a second if i if we add 20 people every single day 20 new people listening that would be awesome but wait a second how long does it take for 30 us 30 years yeah, yeah. 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 I was gonna say. holy shit that means we're going to be doing this for 15 years before we even get any real 30 year overnight success right yeah. so yeah. you know it's uh i don't know i think people don't realize that very much and they get so focused on that number versus what you know that i think that kind of helped us early on to see that and to stay focused on the value building in the people, the small amount of people yeah. that we had listening to. There's no to. silver bullet. No, there isn't. Yeah. And you're, you're far better off, I said this the other day too, that you're far better off only adding 10 people a day versus adding 1,000 people a day, but the 10 people you service really well and you add value to their life than 1,000 random people that are just looky-loos that are, yeah. that are dropping in formula. to see what you're doing. Yeah, and yeah. that... Is how you build a substantial mm-hmm. business. What about highlights, Doug? You said all the negatives. Have you got any like, <laughs> positive shit that happened? Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, a lot. What are, yeah, what have been like your most like, fuck yeah, where you're excited? Well, I, I would say just kind of, I don't know. It sounds a little bit, um, I'm not sure the word here, but. I, I would say, you know, every day I come in, I, I enjoy myself. Mm-hmm. Okay? That's cool. Which is, which is great. I mean, anytime you're doing some type of a job, so to speak, you want to enjoy yourself on a day-to-day basis. And so I feel like I'm certainly in the best space for myself. But the real highlights are when we get on the road, for Mm -hmm, me. mm -hmm. So when we go off and we travel someplace or just even go, you know, up to uh, San Francisco, up to the the prime rib place, that to me is really a highlight. Mm. And of course, then we have some like financial highlights, things like that, which are always milestones. Fun, yeah, know? yeah. But uh, no, for me, just like hanging around a, a campfire or fire pit, like when we went up to uh, Santa Cruz. Oh, yeah. That I shows mean, your age and wisdom there. Right? It the, is. The, the, the ability the to stuff. right, right. The, the the things that I, it's funny you bring this up. So this Sunday, I come in, Sunday, Katrina and I come in here and we work out pretty consistently. And I actually had a moment like that where I'm, I'm opening the, the gym and I'm walking in, uh, doing the alarm and stuff. And I think, you know what? I stopped myself for a moment and to just appreciate the ability to do that, to be able to walk into, you know, quote unquote, my gym, my own place, nobody else in there using it, plug my music in, you know what I'm saying? And work out with my girl for as long as we want and sit in a sauna afterwards and I think to myself, like I take how much I take that for granted. Mm-hmm. That if you were to ask me when I was twenty years old, just getting into fitness, how much that moment would mean to me, like yeah. that moment alone, just to be able to do that, to have, and to not stress about keeping the door open, right? Mm-hmm. Like because that's the other thing too. There's a lot of people that open up gyms right now, which I, I'm, I don't advise because I think it's a very challenging business to do. That they have the stress of keeping it busy, and it's like you don't even get to really like we thoroughly get to enjoy. No, this, this place. is legit your yep. gym. Yeah, like I've I've contemplated working out naked in here a couple of times, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just because I fucking can. We got you know? the we got the security. <laughs> yeah, so Put the sock why. on the door on the outside, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, right. Yeah. So we know. Something. But I mean, the ability for you to to catch those moments, Doug. I think you're right. The the fact that we can go have an eight hundred dollar prime rib dinner and not bat an eye over it because that's that's stuff that and with the whole team and have laughs and enjoy it and not stress over that what's where where revenue is going to come the next day i mean that's really what it's all about is to be able to do all yeah. those things and to and like you said come to work every day yeah. and enjoy what we you're were doing. talking about we were actually when, when uh, justin and i and, and our girls were out the, after dinner we were talking about this and how 
maybe sometime soon we could even plan a vacation where we all together go somewhere with our families so that <laughs> we talked about that on the it, drive home yeah oh you guys did too yeah, yeah. where where we could take a two week vacation yeah but we also scheduled take our, work in the yeah. morning and then we take off take our equipment with us and yeah. we're in we're in fucking florence There's or a lot whatever of freedom in that and we could record our episodes in the morning do our work and then the rest of the night go out or whatever because i think i think it is important that we we all get the families together too so everybody you know, because it was nice having Jessica and, and, yeah. and Courtney was, together hanging out. It's and, important to do Yeah, that because stuff. it's a big family, you know? Yeah. But yeah, hope maybe we could do that at some point. I agree. Well, our next question is kind of similar. Lucky Hoagie, mm. how do you guys handle conflicts between the four of you? Are there any times that you have serious conflicts or disagreements? We, uh, it's a fight to the death. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's arm so wrestling we, challenge. Yeah, somebody died. We actually, I, I, I did a whole new thing. I'm like, we're LARPing from now on. <laughs> yeah. So now we're going to figure this out. Yeah, yeah. How often would you guys say lightning on a, on a weekly, monthly, quarterly basis? Do you think that we get into disagreements? How often? Like big disagreements? Well, I mean, it's not that common. I mean, it's a bunch of little disagreements. Yeah, and it's, then it's, sometimes it's big. It's usually Adam and I, it's usually you and I that get into the mm. conflict. <laughs> yeah. Typically. That's the but, common. Yeah. Well, J- Justin, yeah, Justin, and, Justin, and Doug are are easy. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. they're they're easy to get along, and they're like they're not much on c- causing waves. Either that, or they're just wise. You know, they're, just, <laughs> they're sitting back and just like let this play out. It'll be the same I know after. where this road's going. Yeah. That's pr- that's probably true. Yeah. I mean, I would think that I I think we have on a weekly basis we have disagreements. Sure. Yeah. I think that's just it. Is that we don't you know there's no such thing as uh, big problems. Only problems that we make big, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. I really believe in that, and I believe that. When we do, when we do have these disagreements, they could have been big. They all could be big. You know, what I'm saying they all could turn into drama of and a big fight in this, in this like pulling left and right. But I think no, none of none of them do we ever allow there's, to get. No, I think there's like this unspoken rule where it's like we're gonna go, we're gonna talk, we disagree. Everyone's gonna be straight. Everyone's gonna be honest. And then when it's done, it's done. It's almost like that's the unspoken rule. You know what I mean? When it's done, we're over. Yeah, it's been solved. Uh, the you know the answer we know what the answer is everybody agrees and that's it get over it like if you didn't get your way or if they didn't get whatever you get over it and then you move on to the next thing and that's it and then if you end up finding out that you know later on that we should have gone a different direction there's no like I told you stupid you just fucking because I was part of that hold you over that you know what happens sometimes here's what happens a lot of times especially with business partners you'll have two business partners who will debate and argue and discuss a, an idea. Like, let's say one person says, we need to spend $50,000 advertising over here, and the other person says, no, that's a stupid decision. Take the 50000 and invest it over here. And then there's this big debate, and then they finally, at the end of it, decide, okay, you know, we'll put that money into advertising. That's what we decided to do. And then afterwards, they learn it wasn't a good investment, and maybe the other idea would have been better. You know what a lot of people do after that? They rub it in afterwards. Like, mm-hmm. see, I fucking told you. Should we should? And right. that's how you get resentment. The way I feel like we tend to handle it is if that were to happen, we're all equally happy. I'm well. Yeah. I made the decision oh, you with were you. Right? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like you acknowledge. Or no, if even if you were wrong, even if you were wrong, and my idea was right, at yeah. the end of the day, I agreed to go. We all agree. Well, I feel like you each one of us, if we were wrong, like if it all plays out, you know, the way that somebody else was right, it's like. You're gonna like almost like uh, you know put that out there like hey man you were right about that, that yeah, that's yeah, crazy yeah. you know it's like there's I'm not like like oh man like I'm so stupid uh, like yeah. I said the wrong thing <laughs> well who gives a shit like whoever's right is right like at the end of the day and well, I think that's how we operate well this, I mean this, this happens all the time there's always time and Sal's right that him and I probably have the most disagreements and there's plenty of times where he's right and there's plenty of times where I'm right and I'm wrong so. At the end of the day, the business ends up being right. Yeah. That's what matters. I, I really don't so, <laughs> so yeah, if yeah, I'm yeah. like, for example, one of the would you this, rather be right or win? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, yeah. so that's why I like the sport analogy with the way this dynamic works. And I think where it doesn't work is when people get offended and they let their their personal feelings get involved. Where we all we look at it always as like okay, for example, like picking it to the sports analogy. You know, when you're when you're playing with a team of players. And you are critiquing the game, right? Like, for example, the play that we just ran. And I came to Sal and I go, hey, bro, what the fuck, dude? You got to set a screen right there. And when you pivot and you open up, you got to seal the guy and you got to seal him with your hips and do it like this. Instead, of he doesn't look at me and get all butt hurt that I'm acting like I'm better than he is. If I'm giving advice that has something to do with the game being played better and us winning the game, 
he's going to take he's heed be to that. Receptive. Towards He'll be it. receptive towards it, and 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 maybe I'll give him advice sometime. And he goes to do it, and it blows the play, and now it's worse. And it was bad advice that I gave him. He now will fix it. There's not this rubbing in. Oh, you were wrong. Yeah, I was right. It's not about that. And it's an, like, another problem too. You'll see a lot of times on teams is they will let's say there is a disagreement or a debate. One person ends up it goes that person's way. Then when they leave the office or whatever, the person who was whatever you want to say wrong or didn't get his way doesn't support the other person's plan now. Almost right. as like to right, try to right. sabotage. Right, it. that's taking it personal. That's, that's a, a bad. That is the worst. That's a bitch move. It, it is. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes people do it subconsciously. Yeah, sometimes they're yeah. just like you like sabotage. Yeah, because it they don't agree with your idea. They're not going to put their no. That's their an everything ex- into that's it. an excellent point. This yeah, happens a lot. Yeah. People's and that's again allowing your. This is very very common. It's a great point. A lot of times people think that they're playing like a team together. No, and but then, because they didn't agree with it at yeah, the beginning. Yeah, because they were wrong. They're, they're not going to put their... Now all of a sudden they, they have like this chip on their shoulder and it. then they're out to prove the other person wrong. And again, allowing the ego to get involved where I think everyone dissolves their ego no, in this at the situation. No, at the end of the day, I don't give a shit. Whatever we decide to do, even if it's an idea that I'm like arguing against, yeah. I am going to execute my side as much as... In fact, the way I look at it is if honestly, if I truly think it's a bad idea. I'm going to try even harder because I'm worried that it might not work, right? I'm going to apply myself because at the end of the day, the goal is there's one singular focus. And here's the deal. When a unit works together like one mind and one body, they are very, very effective. When you have a bunch of scattered people all with their own you know, goals and everybody, this person wants to move up you know, the, the ladder a little bit and this person wants, and I don't like that guy's idea, so I'm not going to you know, try and help at all and you're fucked. Your business is fucked. Yeah, you're not yeah. going to succeed. Right, There's no right. way. You, and I don't care how talented your team is. You're not going to succeed. I've had some of the most ragtag team, uh, uh, you know, teams managing gyms, and we did incredible things. And it was because, you know, four people working together with the same passion, with that same attitude, far more, far more uh, successful than a team of four superstars who don't. Give that, a shit about yeah, that run at sixty percent, right? Yeah, it just having having four supers, and then you see this in sports all the time for that exact reason. You know, back to that analogy of the setting the screen. I mean, that Sal has that option after I come over and coach him to do that, to do like a half ass version of what I just did to make sure just that so it, I could say to him, right? So just so you fails. Could, just so you. And if you really care about being right more than you care about winning, you're the type of person that does bullshit yeah. like that. But I know that nobody in this room is like that. If someone comes with a critique in the business, and even if I disagree with it, I'm still going to give my best at what they're saying in hopes that the first time, first time we attempt it and the way we all agreed on, we hit it out the park. And then if it doesn't fail, I know I gave it my best, and now, okay, well, it didn't work, yeah. so let's try something else. Yeah. I also think, too, when you have a team that sees a, a there's a goal that's kind of overarching and larger than or bigger than the individual goals, I think that helps a little bit too because at the end of the day, we are a business. We are trying to become successful. We we do want to create this media, you know, in, in the fitness you know world, create this media empire and all this other stuff. But what's the overarching goal and theme? I mean, here's the bottom line. Like, you know, especially, you know, Adam, Justin, and I, we've been working with and training people for decades. We've been helping people with fitness for decades. You don't do that for that long Unless you actually care about people, you know, becoming healthier and becoming more fit, you know, you don't do it because of the money. It's not a, a money business. Being a personal trainer, you can do okay, but it's not a. It's not like investment banking where you're right. going to go in and you know, it's not. You're not motivated to go in there for yeah. money. You're motivated because you like helping. Like shit, Adam was in the weed business, making shit tons of money, came back to fitness because right. it's his purpose, right? So we have this overarching goal, which at the end of the day. We still want to be successful. We want to make money. We want to grow the business. But at the end of the day, we want to create the right message for this industry. We want to move this industry in a direction that helps people. We want to get people having the right conversations, introducing the right people through our media, through our reach. And so because we have that overarching goal at the end of it, it's easy for you to to, to, to take a hit in the ego. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? After a conversation, it's okay to, at the end of it be like, all right, fuck it. You know, they, you know, my idea. Nobody liked it. Everyone's yeah. going with the other idea. But at the end of the day, you know, our goal is like this is the big overarching theme. That's the direction we're going to move. Because at the end of it, my goal isn't to fucking come out of this and be the fucking ego champion. I really don't give a shit about that. To be honest with you, I no, could care less. No. I'm too old for that shit. <laughs> right. you know what I'm no. <laughs> Nobody cares about. I think that. everybody feels that way. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it works. I just want to win, man. Yeah, let's win. That might be another thing too. It's funny because um, a lot of people. I think a lot of young people don't realize this. 
fame is not something that most people should seek out without like what you can do with that. Like you maybe create a successful business or whatever. Cause you're seeing that with social media. You're seeing all these, these people with 40,000, 50,000, 150,000 followers, but they're not doing anything with it because they just want the attention. It is so common right now that, that, that that's, they're focusing on that while they don't even really have a real business. They have nothing. Mm -hmm. They just want eyes on them. Yes. That sucks. Why the, that, you know what that is? That's a very, that's a very ego thing. You just want your ego to feel better. I don't want to. I don't want to get recognized for no reason. That's stupid. Oh, hey, what's the up? The irony is they got. I, I hate that part. The irony is they got to lay in the bed that they make, man. I yeah, tell you what, yeah. because they, you think it's all what it's cracked up to be, and then you get all this attention, and then we know what comes with all that attention. People are are going to scrutinize, and they're going to poke at, and they're going to. You become a character, man. Right. Target. Meanwhile, all uh, the only thing that you've put together as far as a business model is a is a logo flip on a t shirt that you're doubling up the price yeah. on, and because you have a million people, you make decent money right now. But that's not a real business, no. by the way. <laughs> no, it's not. And I, honestly, it's it's a re, it's there's a lot of re, like if we if we could do this and never and nobody know who we were, I think we would all prefer to do it that way. Yeah. There's a little bit of reluctance. Uh, it's part of what we're doing, and we're the best ones to deliver many, some a lot of our messages, obviously. But at the end of the day, I don't. None of us are seeking that. Like I, I don't. I don't know about you guys. I don't want to be like nah, everybody nah. know me, and I'm the you know whatever. That's not no, something we're No, a, the first thing that we did with this whole rendition of the website is let's pull our shit off there. Like, yeah. let's get models to do it. I don't have an ugly mug out of there. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be the face. I'm fucking losing uh, my hair. We can't have me on the fucking <laughs> cover and shit. Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, find some uh, young, go find a yeah, young, old, handsome version. Hair, find I'm the like, 21-year-old version yeah. of me. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Ain't no one going to buy that shit. That's hilarious. <laughs> hey, check this out. If you go to mindpumpfree.com, you can look through our entire library of guides and they're all free. Every single one of them on that site is free. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.